Uh, I think, Liam, you're a little bit quiet, at least to me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, let me eat the mic a little bit here. Oh, fuck! There you go. Ah, <laughs> well, Damn. we killed Liam. Not He's supposed dead. to actually eat it. Oh, oh it's... it's so tasty. <laughs> oh man, can we do a whole one where Liam, Liam, you're already a sexy MF. Can you do one like that, please? You make me pointy for uh, two hours. You make me, you make me pointy. You like that? Uh, I like yes. it a lot. Yeah, I stole pointy. I, I, it's actually one of my greatest shames. I stole the pointy joke from a, a friend of mine named David Powers. Shout out to David Powers. Yeah, an uncredited contributor. Yeah, yeah. I, I steal a lot of phrases. There's some real gross ones I have, like uh, a euphemism for sex being touching tutors. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I give heard people that phrases, times. but all of mine are just things like things of this nature. I, I, yeah, I... I, uh, I think I invented have a nice time. Unless you did. did. Yeah. International Best Friends Day? Inter I, International Friends Day, yes. Yeah, yeah. I try and do my very best to use uh, "suck the shit out of my ass," um, which is a, a <laughs> Liam. I enjoy that so much, and it sounds so strange. I have to say it in a very strong Scottish <laughs> accent for it to be convincing. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, that's that's magnificent. Uh, all right, you want to you want to do this? I yeah. Dinner with Jackie let's, and AJ? let's do a podcast. Let's podcast. Um, let's pod. Hello and welcome to Well, there's your problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. I'm. Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. All right, go. I am. <laughs> I'm the assemblage of, of COVID <laughs> modules <laughs> currently piloting the body of Alice Caldwell <laughs> Kelly. I guess that makes my pronouns they and them. Yay, Liam. Yay, Liam. Hi, I'm Liam Anderson. I'm the person talking right now. Uh, I was joking. Don't actually fucking they them me. No, don't. Uh, unless you're mad at her. She, uh, yeah, boy, unless you're mad at me, yeah. Yeah, it's it's disgusting. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, we have a guest. We have a guest. Oh, he was just about to take a sip of water too. <laughs> <laughs> Re returning champion. Ah, uh, doing a great yeah. job of introducing myself onto this podcast. What what a lovely time! Come, I've come back to spend some time with my dear friends, uh, in the WTYP team. Uh, yeah, it's Gareth Dennis. Hi, hi, I'm here. What are your pronouns? Oh yeah, my pronouns are he him. Thanks, Liam. Uh, I You're suck. Welcome. My pronouns are he him. We, we we trip everybody up with the pronouns, including I guess myself just now. Yeah, yeah we're all confused because uh, um, of well, the woke. It's because there's also some genuine time pressure, which which as yeah. a podcast we we're not very good at at uh, yeah. uh, uh, like as as collective podcasters. As someone who has a long form podcast, uh, I'm not very good at it, and I think you know the the, the hogs know that you're not very good at it as well. Uh, yes. Owns a better. So I don't come on to Rail Nasser and criticize your time management skills. <laughs> oh, our time management skills are in the toilet, Alice. They think, always have been. Alice, okay, you came on true. and did an episode on time management. So that's I'm, true. Yeah, yeah that's a good do point. You, yeah. Do you remember when we recorded was it uh, Bhopal and then University back to back? Do you remember a mere moment ago where we said we had a time pressure and then we each <laughs> launched a tangent independently? It's okay. Yes. I got, it's I got like two and a right half now. hours. I can make it work. We have 63 slides, Liam. I yeah. fucking hate this game. So, <laughs> <laughs> Literally unplayable. What you see on the screen in front of you is a massive impediment to shipping. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've always wanted to impede that as a longtime member of yeah. the Houthi rebels. I, I was about to say, this is, this is not Houthis, but it does start with H. It's a hyperloop. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, H is for hyperloop and Elon Musk's turd alphabet? <laughs> also known as Swiss Metro, we'll get there. Yeah, owing to the recent demise of Hyperloop One, we think it's finally to come out and talk about the Hyperloop on a podcast. Now, ideally, we would have done an episode on Hyperloop earlier, so we could all say we told you so, but we didn't do that. But rest assured, we've all been thinking it for at least a decade now. <laughs> I think we've had it in news segments before. If Don't anyone you, wants you to did like, it. go back. You had a Hyperloop. Did you have a Hyperloop video on Do Not Eat? No, it was a regular loop. Yeah, it was a regular loop. Just plain loop. Um, I We've done it on TF a bunch of times. So definitely, like, in the sort of broader universe, we're very, very, like, anti-Hyperloop. Yep. I yes. could, yeah, I, could, I, 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 I tweeted about it angrily uh, in 2017, so that's my, that's my like, checkpoint on when I was uh, mad about it. From Alice Avazandam, Hyperloop. <laughs> uh, 
Elon Musk finally builds the Hyperloop traveling so fast beneath California, every passenger arrives dead exactly according to plan. Uh, yeah. 13th of February, 2017. Nice, nice. Yeah, I would say I, I, I first got mad at it the first time I saw the white paper. Um, 2013, you know. golly. Roz, Roz was a Hyperloop hating hipster before it was cool. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I started hating early. Mm -hmm. I, you were born a hater. And my hate has only grown more pure. I'm, I'm <laughs> proud of you. There's one here that says, I just wanted to make a joke about Peter Thiel before he steals all my blood to power the Hyperloop. <laughs> <laughs> I forget how good at tweeting you are. Yeah, I thought, oh, I thought the new the new hyperloop that they're proposing in Canada runs on plasma, not blood. What? <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Um, but before we talk about the late uh, hyperloop, uh, we have to do the goddamn news. Uh, folks, it's real. It's real, and it's weak, and it's our it, enemy. Yeah, this thing will get outclassed by a Subaru Outback. <laughs> the um, it has come to light that the new all stainless steel Cybertruck, uh, needs to be frequently cleaned from any kind of corrosive substance, or it may damage the uh, exterior through right. corrosion. Uh, right from Alice Avazandam's Cybertruck. Uh, <laughs> actually, nothing. I, I haven't got any good cyberpunk tweets, which is weird, given that it's the easy, the slowest moving, largest, most polygonal target. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I, it's I, like a, it's like an F seven F one seventeen, and you're uh, a Serbian baker. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've always identified very deeply with like Serbian service to MS Alcros. Yeah, first the Houthis, now them. I, so. According to the user's manual of the Cybertruck to prevent damage to the exterior, immediately remove corrosive substances such as grease, oil, bird droppings, tree resin, dead insects, tar spots, road salt, industrial fallout, etc. Do not wait until Cybertruck is due for a complete wash. If necessary, use genetics, blah, 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 blah. I this hate thing the like, is... tech manual convention of referring to it by name, no pronoun. Uh, yeah. as, like, do not charge iPhone unless thing. Do not char do not wash Cybertruck unless whatever. Um, but yeah, we've all seen the videos of this thing, like, in the flesh, with all of the panels out of alignment, getting its <laughs> wheels stuck spinning in, like, a sort of five-degree slope. What was yeah. the coach? What was the coach that 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 was in the crash in the first episode we did together that had like not stainless steel, but it it like the, uh, rusted the hardly. Oz, the Osgood Bradley coaches. Is this the Osgood Bradley coach of the, well, the 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 road world? Here's the thing: a lot of people have been commenting that the reason this is happening is because it doesn't have a clear coat. But I believe this particular grade of stainless steel will corrode if you clear coat it just from the clear coat. <laughs> oh my god! Um, so that, <laughs> that's also not an option. They these have... things don't <laughs> these things don't react well to sort of belt and suspenders approach to corrosion prevention. Some things um, in here don't react well to clear coats. I was trying to do Sean Connery there, but I have too much of a cold. Um, yeah. So the other thing that strikes me is that like they've got the experience of owning a 1970s Italian sports car where it rains once and you wake up and the suspension is a pile of rust lying <laughs> yeah. under the car, but without ah. being fun to drive, and it's the whole body of the car. Long yeah. live glorious Alfa Romeo. <laughs> mm. So a lot of stuff really confuses me about this because stainless steel is, you know. A very resilient material. I mean, that's what they build all the the train cars out of here in the United States because it works really good. And here, it's just falling apart instantly. Now, I know that Tesla developed their own special kind of stainless steel. They call three O X. Well, there's your um, there's your problem. Yeah, <laughs> Elon yeah, Musk has been involved in the design process. <laughs> I have no idea how or what they did to it. I mean, presumably, what they've done to prevent. So there's something stainless likes to do called oil canning, right? Where it, it warps a little bit when it's pressed flat, which doesn't look very good. And I guess what they've done to prevent that is sacrifice all the natural corrosion resistant properties <laughs> of stainless steel. Ah, um, <laughs> metallurgy, you know, it's a series of trade offs. And somehow yeah. they've made every single one of those wrong. Well, the thing is, I, I, I believe. It is an 18 and 8 stainless steel, you know, 18% chromium, 8% nickel. Maybe it's the other way around, I forget, which is usually pretty resilient. But I, I don't know how they fucked it up this badly. Um, I mean, fucking title his biography that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I found out something so, about Elon Musk, by the way. Um, you know, he tried on for a while, and I'm not making fun of anyone for trying on new names, because, yeah, but, you know, he tried pronouncing his name Elon for a bit? Elon. And this video of him call, like introducing himself as Elon Musk at a conference, and no one, no one buys it, you know? He had to go <laughs> back to Elon by sort of popular <laughs> demand. Which, uh, a little bit sad. Well, you know, he tried. Yeah. Um, which Should is cool more than name. more than can be said about what he did with the Hyperloop, um, <laughs> you know. But yeah, I mean, so these 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 cyber trucks are all pavement princesses. It's 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 really incredible what Southern California brain does to you in car design. Yeah, I mean, this um, is the thing. Like, you you can buy the sort of child killing Ford pickup with the sort of massive flat front, and it will at least like drive off road. Yeah. Like as I understand it, that. They're, they're, they're quite good at that. The okay, the you know, the, the truck bed is still the same size as an old Toyota Tacoma, but like it, you can still put stuff in it and the panels meet. Um so you know, you could just buy one of those, or you could buy this and sort of have everyone <laughs> realize that you're a dipshit Lab as the car it, melts Lab holes in it, right. in it in the rain. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you're gonna drive this to onto like the grass parking lot at the Maryland Renaissance Fair, and by the time you're back, your car will be in pieces like the Blues Brothers car. <laughs> <laughs> Maryland Maryland Renaissance Fair, an acute observation of where I'm likely to see one of these parked, I think. Twenty twenty four and Elon Musk has invented all British automotive output from the nineteen seventies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all I need to know is that the Cybertruck is more aerodynamic in reverse, which to be honest, it looks like it might be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in other news. Whoa. Uh, whoa. <laughs> but Boeing <Yeah. laughs> Boeing is fucking up because of DEI initiatives causing parts to fall off planes. Yeah, right, this is it. <laughs> it was, we, we've gone far enough with creating shareholder value. Just nationalize Boeing. Mm -hmm. Do the unspeakable to all the all the executives, yeah, so on and course. so forth. Shovel their corpses out into the into the, the Puget Sound or whatever to, to the be, fuck. To be clear, we don't actually believe that this is the fault of woke. Right? What's happening yeah. is Boeing is fucking up, and there has been this like confluence of minor accidents uh, and sort of incidents and stuff. And one big, not so minor incident of the fucking door coming off one of the planes. Um, but all of the worst chuds in the world are trying to push the idea that the reason this is happening is because Boeing is doing DEI, uh, diversity, equality, and inclusion, like corporate woke. Um, and because of that, and they're, you know, it's, it's abstracted on a number of levels how far away they want to obscure their sort of conspiracist idea that the airlines are hiring black people for the first time in history, apparently, and that's making the wings fall off the plane. But that's basically what they're saying. It is right. nonsense, uh, and anyone who tells you it is trying to sell you on becoming a Nazi. But um, it, do it is true that the wings are falling off the planes. It's just not because of what. What's no. What's funny is that air, is that all this Boeing stuff is happening at the same time that uh, that Airbus was like had fire rage through it and everyone got off it safely. Mm. So air, air, Airbus is kind of rubbing its hands together at this point as Boeing seems to be taking a shit on itself. European yeah. excellence burger plane washed. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the two recent incidents here are um, at the uh, at at Atlanta um, a. <laughs> Delta 757 had a nose wheel fall off when it was taking off. Hey, I you know. Yeah. And uh, that's not especially seems, good. Seems sweet, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I forget what the other one was, but there was oh, a the plane other one, that was the other missing. The other one was a, a Virgin Atlantic plane that was going to fly transatlantic. Uh, and as it was on the runway, passenger looks out the window, sees that there's a bunch of bolts missing in one of the like wing uh, things and tells the stewardess who is like, okay, well, uh, we cannot fly the plane now, I guess, because it's got like 50 bolts missing. Because of woke yeah. is why. Wait, wasn't there another, what was the door with, what, also a door fell, like blew yeah, out. Yeah, 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 we did this, we did this um, last oh, episode, yeah, yeah, with the Alaska plane that the door blew off. Uh, basically what this amounts to is Boeing is doing stuff on the cheap, and also airlines are not as good at maintenance as they should be. I was about to say, you know, zero fatalities in however many years now, but that's not for lack of trying. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Everyone who uh, you talk to who works with uh, you know, passenger aviation 
sort of understands that the unblemished safety record is by virtue of like a lot of really good engineering applied in some of the dumbest ways possible <laughs> um and yeah i mean at some of it does just run down to dumb luck as well i, I i'm 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 counting on these numbers getting worse because <laughs> certainly in europe um uh, aviation and railways are on level pegging in terms of passenger safety Mm. So we need a, we need a few biggies, uh, you know. We need we need we need, uh, we need Boeing to, <laughs> well, to keep us in work in the and to keep to, you to, in work as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, yeah, no, they're pretty much exactly level pegging <laughs> in terms of fatalities for per billion kilometers or whatever. So, uh, come mm. on, Boeing, yeah, that's give me a solid. Uh, you gotta so, uh, just for clarity. I, I, I'm not calling for a plane crash <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, legally. You cannot. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Gareth wants two 747s to wreck into each other again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're flying a 747 at this point, you kind of deserve what you get. But um, oh my yeah. god, <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, uh, there's there's been um, like some of the the operators are putting a little like, is this flown by a, bl a Boeing check field? on flights you can search Ooh, for in case you ouch. want to like veto it wow. in case you only want to fly airbus the correct passenger actually no <laughs> i i'm not going to take a stance that hard on behalf of airbus the true proletarian uh, uh passenger air vehicle is an Embraer because uh lula, because of lula and the lulags you know yes <laughs> do you not do you not ask anything about what the Embraer family does or, <laughs> yeah uh, maybe uh maybe, maybe an illusion or something you know <laughs> short everyone should be flying short that's uh um, that's, yep. yeah flying boats yeah that's it maybe maybe a nice de Havilland otter Ooh. <laughs> yeah that's it why did I just assume that there was an Embraer family? Why did I assume that that was like a, a name? Surely there's a dynasty. There's got to be an Embraer dynasty. That sounds. No, no, no. It sounds no, like a dynastic name. Sure. Uh, I'm going to butcher this, but it's Empresa Brasileira de Aeronautica. Uh, it's the Brazilian Aeronautics Corporation. Damn. Oh, well. It was, it was nationalized originally, which, again, Lula, do it again, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the goddamn news. <laughs> Sorry, right. this thing makes me laugh oh, whenever I God. see it. Yeah, um, <laughs> I will not live in the pod. I will not. I was trying bark. to. I was. I was trying to do something with this image where they, the transport tycoon bankruptcy message would pop up down here. <laughs> um, but the thing is, I left the game running for an hour with a deficit that never came up, oh, so dude. I couldn't take a screenshot. Yeah, um, I mean, anyway, so bankruptcy and transport isn't real is the lesson that transport <laughs> yeah. fever teaches yeah. you. you no, know, the worst part was after that hour, uh, the company started making money. I'm very bad at losing money in that game. <laughs> this is are. this is the thing about transport, you know. It's it's teaching yeah. you a realistic lesson, which is it doesn't matter how big a loss you post. So yeah. the, MTA, the, stop paying your bills. Yeah, <laughs> stop paying your bills. Stop charging fares. Everybody be like Albuquerque. The biggest. Hyperloop company, Hyperloop One, has gone bankrupt and had its assets sold off to creditors. Oh no! What does this we mean? We could have we could have gotten some Hyperloop shit. Like when they had the Twitter auction, people bought the Twitter like swag too quickly for us to get a big like wooden bird thing out of their office. But like we could have gotten some Hyperloop shit, some yeah. pens or something, you know. I put the whole pod in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, I want to see this pod up on cinder blocks in front of a Philly row house. Oh, that'd be really funny. <laughs> um, so I thought, you know, the best way to get us to where we are with the Hyperloop being not completely dead, but mostly dead, is first we have to do history. We have when you to say ask, first we have to do and then a pause yeah. it primes me. Yeah. Sort of, Bro, you I was, I was fucking ready. clicker right. trained me to hit the news drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we must ask, what is a hyperloop? Uh a fraud. Well, it's, it's like a it's like a loop, but more so, you know? Yeah. Hyper. Mm. It's just my clef. Yeah. So, well, sort of. <laughs> but first we have to talk about God using damn it. air to move trains. Oh, it's we've come full circle now. Yes. Yeah. It's we're, we're finally we've run out of ideas. We're back to the clip show format, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Everybody like true. sit back, that's... tune out for an hour or so. Um, remember <laughs> these your favorite bangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
They'll never stop. Well, there's your problem podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's because we got to make it. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll be doing this into our yeah. ACs, you know. Until the wheels yeah. come off. Uh. Okay. I'm just going to talk briefly about atmospheric railways. Since there's been trains, there's been proposals to power them by means other than steam, one of which is messing with air pressure. Yeah, the big suck. Right? Yeah, exactly. The big suck or the big blow. Mm. That's yeah. It. Sorry. You know, uh, the first attempt in 1834, the Dalkey Atmospheric Railway, that's a piston in a tube. 1835, the Paris St. Germain Railway, that's another piston in a tube. You have a tube, differential air pressure, there's a piston in it, there's a slot at the top, train goes, right? Yeah, listen uh, to the fucking Atmospheric Railway episode. You can learn a lot about rat viscera. Yeah, and uh, yeah. terrified Irishmen. Yes, exactly. <laughs> There are several people who have done animations of that specific episode because it's one of our best. Um, this uh, date, remaining optimistic. I think we can hit higher heights. Yes. So um, another. So this was done either because they needed to climb slopes, they needed more speed, so on and so forth. Um, but they didn't work that well, and steam technology sort of advanced beyond uh -huh. that, right? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's worth very briefly saying this. This does this. There wasn't so much craziness. The the idea was taking the power source out of the train, which is what we've done with electric trains, right? With overhead mm, electrification. Yes. So the logic here was sort of sound because they didn't have good electricity at this point. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, it ended up with uh, rat viscera, and uh, it wasn't very good. Yes. Um, another example is Alfred Eli Beach's Beach Pneumatic Transit System. In New York City, this was in 1870. It was a new it's idea. A cute bug one on the right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Instead of having a piston in a tube, the whole train is the piston. Oh, right. He ran a oh. test track that went 300 feet from Broadway and Warren Street to just past Broadway and Warren Street <laughs> in Manhattan. Okay. And, right? and that thin wooden door is the plank between you and eternity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was intended to go five more miles to Central Park. It would be faster than a streetcar and cleaner than one of the steam elevated trains. But the project was killed by the Panic of 1873 because of how the gold standard works, which is to say it doesn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, these, these systems all try to solve various problems like steep grades, low speeds, uncleanliness, so on and so forth, with the power of air. None of them stood the test of time because steam technology improved, and then electricity took over, as Gareth said. Yeah, and, and, and we have now a solved technology in the form of overhead line electrification that goes to a nuclear power plant that just yes. does... No, we got to put train. batteries on it. Battery trains are the future. Uh, what about what hydrogen? Some wires? In, the, <laughs> in the same way that firearms are a solved technology... Trains are a solved technology. It's fine. Yes, We've solved it, folks. It's done. Yeah. Just it's, build it. Until you invent people... like some kind of frictionless material or maglev, unless you make maglev like really practical or whatever, maybe it's fine. There's a a we'll lot of there. people out there who hear things like 120 year old technology and they think that they just it just means that it's that old as opposed to there's 120 years of development. Oh, how many <laughs> wars did the Colt 45 win? You know, I, maybe I should try and sell it this way in a slightly more masculine sense and say that the overhead line electrification is the Colt 1911 of trains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's 120 years of development on that. 125 yeah. years of perfection. It's got you can't get power. that from a new technology. <laughs> yeah. So, Incidentally, the, the, the plug pneumatic tube train is an affront to God. Uh, <laughs> It, uh, it goes against everything in my principles as, as a railway engineer. Designing the train to essentially contact everything around it makes me unhappy. It's, it sounds like there'd be a lot of friction, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So It'll lube up that train. By like the late 1800s, early 1900s, it seems like railroads had topped out at about 100 miles an hour, which is faster than anyone could conceivably need to go anyway. I kind of but still some believe people, this. You know, it's, if, if, speak if it, for yourself, you know, goddammit. <laughs> I'm not like a big speed person. If my if my journey takes more than you know, it takes a long time at 100 miles an hour constantly, then fine. It takes a long time. It's a long distance. Uh, Some people dared to dream bigger. 
There was this article in Scientific American in 1909 by none other than rocketry pioneer Robert H. Goddard called The Limit of Rapid Transit. And so Goddard proposes a new use for air pressure. Instead of having it push the train, the train is propelled by other means inside an evacuated tube, a vacuum tube. This sounds familiar. Hmm. Yeah, can't yeah. have air resistance if you don't have air. But Elon Musk invented it. And Elon Musk wasn't born in the 1950s. That we know of. That we know of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so these vacuum tube trains, uh, this is an idea he plays with throughout his entire life. He, he only gets posthumously awarded a patent in 1950, despite coming up with it 40 years earlier. The idea, you know, it's simple. There's no air resistance in this evacuated tube. The train can go any arbitrary speed, limited only by the right-of-way geometry and bearings if, you know, the thing uses wheels, which a lot of early proposals do. Some foreshadowing in there, listeners. Yeah. <laughs> limited by geometry. Geometry. Yeah. Keep that in, Ge write that in your the, copy the, books. The geometry being dictated by geography, which is exists, unfortunately. You know, there's, yes. so, there's soils and loams and mountains and stuff yeah, the, in the, in the, the way the, between where you and what you want to go, you know? The guys from alt.pave the earth haven't mm -hmm. won yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, we haven't made a kind of like perfect Indianapolis parking lot per landscape. Yeah. Perfect um, asphalt <laughs> sphere. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I still think that we need a hard cap of 100 miles an hour in all forms of transit. Yeah. If I can't get there in an Antonov AN2, then why do I need to be flying? And then answer off, I ain't going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, fuck Embraer. You know, this is the real shit. I'm flying the crop duster. Yeah. So it can't stall. It has no stall speed. Sorry. The, uh, you know, there's incredible speeds here possible. You know, 1,000 miles an hour, 2,000 miles an hour, 10,000 miles an hour. Sort of depends on that. the route, how much it's, you can accelerate. Much even for me. Maybe, maybe you're doing it Los Angeles to New York City in under an hour. Maybe you're doing like New York to Paris in 40 minutes. It's this exciting concept, but it's hard to implement practically given limitations in, you know, vacuum pump technology, the perfect seal the whole length of the tube. It, no one's Availability built of one. steel. Mm. Yes. No, no <laughs> one's built one for reasons. Um, so, you, you know, we have a um, hype dream. We uh, oh. Doing a little sort of like shadow boxing thing there. Yeah. <laughs> we have two technologies that take over for high speed transportation, one of which is air travel. Boo. 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 This isn't an Antonov AN2. Very, yeah. to be fair, it's, it's pretty fetching. Uh, I love yeah. it when their jet engines are tiny. Mm. Yeah, this is, this is a Boeing 707. This is back when, 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 when parts didn't fall. Well, they did still fall off, but it was acceptable back then. Yeah, this was yeah. significantly deadlier. To fly yeah. on, like d just to retain some sense of perspective, this is way more dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looks cooler though, so it's impossible to say if it was good or not. You know, yeah. yeah. The the comet defeater we've got on screen here to uh, spin back to your previous episode on the comet. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. All right, all right. Good looking air. Air travel gets cheaper. It gets more tolerable. The planes go faster. They don't have to refuel as much. Um. So these really, really fast vacuum tube trains, that's more of a niche idea now because 500 miles an hour is fine, mm. right? Um, and then the other thing is, of course, while researchers in the United States are figuring out the next generation of incredibly high-speed trains, the rest of the world actually builds high-speed trains. This, this is the real shit, my beautiful, <laughs> beloved TGVs. Yeah. For the benefit of listeners, I just saw, uh, in an in a, in a entirely audio only format, just um, air pumped and whittled my fingers around uh, silently. That's <laughs> uh, for everyone's benefit yeah. when the picture of the trains appeared. Um, yes. Uh, you, you show me these early TGVs, I become a gaullist. It's yeah. embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I become oh. like a, a weeb for France. A weeb, but it's O U I B. I'm like, some of the footage they took of those just, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's worth, it's worth, very briefly worth, um, worth interjecting. Uh, uh, that what's fun about this this is their circles back to your apt episode we're circling back to lots of episodes i'm feeling melancholic i've not seen all of you chat to you for ages so i'm mm. just thinking i'm just reminiscing on past times mm. um uh yeah the, so uh, apt uh, the development of the apt involved um fixing the problem that maglev was intended to solve we'll talk about that in a minute i'm sure um which was to deal with once you, once trains reach a certain speed they did this thing where um the wheels that hunt they do this thing called hunting 
they do that anyway. All trains do that. But at certain speeds, um, uh, with kind of the technology of the time in the middle of the last century, they they would kind of do that to the point where it would be they'd vibrate vigorously and use a lot of energy to go yeah. faster. It's, it'd it's, be it's that um, uh, BBC report where the guy's on the APT and he's saying over the kind of like audible rattle of everything around him, it's smooth, quiet, <laughs> and an altogether no, delightful it, experience. But it was well that that that's because he was drunk. They, they, they <laughs> solved it for the APT. So a chap called Alan Wickens, Professor Alan Wickens, who's the guy who came up with who kind of headed the APT project. Um, APT was a failure, but he create he developed a thing called um, your dampers or kind of modern your dampers which solved the hunting problem for high speeds and it was that work that enabled everything after the shinkansen so the first shinkansen didn't employ it and that's kind of why they were limited to 125 130 miles an hour mm. but everything after that used wickens's your dampers so apt might not have worked but the work of the apt researchers gave the rest of the world um conventional steel on steel high speed rail so the tgv used the french tgv used the yaw dampers developed by the the weird white coat boffins um, I was say, in derby we, weird sort of surge of british patriotism to know that something named as britishly as wickens is your dampers is, I, I know is right these, you know <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's um uh, it, it's always interesting you look back at like all this advanced uh, rail technology like half of it comes from british rail because they had a well, wild they had this well-funded uh, yes. research department. Yeah, they are research division. They got money. They they had time to invent UFOs, and as a result of the time <laughs> inventing UFOs, uh, seriously, look up the patents, folks. In the time, in t- time to do that, they also invented a load of really useful shit that we are still using now to this day across the whole uh, global railway. It's quite marvelous. Uh, bring back British Rail. Yeah, bring back British Rail and their own, you know, their their skunk works, their Area 51 or whatever they had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in Derby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so the rest of the world's building high-speed rail. You got the Takedo Shinkansen, that's uh, 1964, regular service at 130 miles an hour between Tokyo and Osaka. The Italians are building the Doretissima, oh, right? That's from beautiful trains. Very oh, yeah. beautiful. It goes from Rome to Florence. Um this is a more modern high-speed train here, but the the Duratissima was one of the very first high-speed rails uh, in Europe, right? Um, that's 1977. I the think French... Pol- the Polish possibly got there first in the official definitions of high-speed rail as well. So shout out to the Polish out there, yeah. Ross, you're in. I, well I done. I didn't know that. Where where yeah. is that? That Google it. I can't I, because I'm dumb as shit. I can't remember the exact name of the line. But um, I, when I did my first high speed rail in Europe episode about um, the, the Selby diversion, um, apparently I was like the French and the Italians got there first. But actually, no. Apparently, the Polish got there as well. So um, shout shout to, to to the Poles and your high speed rail. I'm always yeah. shouting out the Poles. A lot of these <laughs> early ones in Europe. A lot of the early ones are really modernization of uh, yeah, yeah, existing yeah, yeah. routes. They weren't dedicated high speed until you get to the uh, LGV Sud Est in um in, in France that goes mm. from um. Uh, uh, Paris to Lyon. That's 1983, right? Trains are getting faster, much, much faster. They're getting competitive Dude. with the airlines. God, they look good. I, I have yeah. to agree with Alice. These are some of the best looking trains ever. The original yeah, yeah. TGV are, oh my God. I mean, they set well, the speed record for a train with a like specially lightened one of these. Like, yeah. yeah. And speed, they, well, what is it like? F- 470, well, I have to remind myself, 474 kilometers an hour, or was it maybe more than that? Absolutely ludicrous speeds. Okay, okay not, the, not the point, the, the slightly newer ones, as, as Alice says, but like so fast, and it's on French, beautiful French technology. Yeah, I, I have is a particular the... favorite, by the way, which is the TGV La Poste, because I love a fast oh, yes. postal train. And oh, I, love yeah. a, I love a too fast postal train, and it, it doesn't exist anymore because there's no niche for it, because for some reason, in a time where everyone's ordering shit from Amazon constantly, we can't imagine needing to ship stuff really quickly. Um, but yeah, oh, no, it just like we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, Holy shit! <laughs> not four seventy four kilometers an hour, five hundred and seventy four kilometers an hour. Jesus, three hundred and sixty miles, three hundred and sixty yeah. miles an hour that the steel on steel wow. LJV est LJV est uh, has managed with a. With a, a kind of a slightly modded, uh, souped-up uh, TGV. Oh. Yeah, they've been in sort of an un, uh, like a, like a un, un, uh, unofficial competition with the uh, the Japanese superconducting maglev. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. do you know what's funny is that the um, do you know how fast the Yamanashi test track, the maglev, which again we'll get there, folks. Sorry, uh, the L0 series has reached three hundred and seventy-five miles an hour, 
and the steel on steel has reached 360 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour slower conventional steel on steel. So fuck you, Maglev. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, our trains are getting faster um, in Europe, in Asia, um, not so much in the United States. Which is, you know, we have <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> national prestige on the line, right? Mm. All these other, you know, uh, these other smaller and poorer countries are developing HSR. The USA needs to one-up everyone, and this is where the very high-speed transportation system comes in. Yeah, that, that very, a real sort of like finger in the eye there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's this guy, Robert M. Salter. He works at the RAND Corporation. That's the Research and Development Corporation. Right. Yeah, I never respected them as much after I found out that the A and the N are just and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, he comes up with a comprehensive proposal for a VAC train system in America in 1972. And this is a simple matter of thousands of miles of deep track <laughs> tunneling across the country <laughs> with stations at higher elevations. So gravity assists braking and acceleration. Uh, Trains would initially travel at several hundreds of miles an hour on steel wheels, <laughs> but when maglev technology matured, they could be upgraded to much higher speeds, right? How, how would how can gravity slow a train down that's doing it, it, it rabbit ears very high speed? Like need a lot of gravity. You know? oh, these no, stations, I presume these stations were 150 meters in the air, like on sort of like an Eiffel Tower type arrangement. Well, here's the other thing you do is that air pressure from the stations could be used to accelerate and decelerate trains. Wow. So essentially, as they're going up the slope into the station, you open the airlocks and the air rushes out, and that helps slow it down too. Right? Mm. My god. Imagine like, <laughs> standing by one of these platforms. Oh, well, ho <laughs> hopefully. Like, as the station just farts all your clothes off. <laughs> just like... <laughs> <laughs> just like, just like it's a little, a little big... Bing, it's like, bing bong, and then the, just all the doors open. And <laughs> everyone's just stripped nude by this rush of air. <laughs> you know, this is supposed to be good enough. The train might need and not need an onboard motor. And this was in, in, in um, Salter's words, the... Uh, the next logical step for transportation. Oh, was right? it? Yeah. And so this Incredible. nation, this nationwide system is, uh, it was barely on the edge of technical feasibility, but also ludicrously expensive. I love um, things that are that combination. Yeah. Well, they do get to say that it'll make journey times that are just, they can make up the journey times though, because it's so ludicrous, they could just make it up. I'm sure yes. we'll learn a lesson to not pay attention to that sort of hokum. Uh, mm. Oh. This idea was taken seriously. It wasn't really pursued beyond some very high level like technical documents, but it did provide enough breathing room that it could reasonably be claimed that, you know, rail is for once and all obsolete for passenger transportation. <laughs> we should move on to newer technologies. Now, what in fact happened during that same era is we get the High Speed Ground Transportation Act and America invests in this. Yes. Uh, yeah, the Metro, the metro line. line. Yes. <laughs> Oh and my god, I love it so much. It's like the sum total of the 20th century is we get the Metro Liner and some track upgrades, the Northeast Corridor, and everything sort of decays. I right? love it so much. It's just like, mm. fuck you, air. Uh, Aerodynamics just is runs for pussies, into it yeah. with a blunt end. <laughs> <laughs> they did manage uh, 160 miles an hour in these once. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> is this the one that blew out windows adjacent to it? Y yes. <laughs> During one of the first uh, test runs, it blew out the windows on a commuter train next to it. <laughs> That's why they test uh, at night now. <laughs> uh, make the train pointy. Not in that way. Mm. Oh, yes. So, so <laughs> we don't really invest in high-speed rail in the United States in any meaningful way until California high-speed rail. Woo! Yeah, I mean, the thing is, right, being governor of California makes you insane, and... Every generation, there is a governor of California who wishes to govern as Kaiser Augustus. Um, <laughs> so, Reagan, <laughs> Jerry Brown, uh, B B B Leland Stanford, probably. I haven't checked if he was governor. Um, I think he was, yeah. And now Gavin Newsom. And so, yes. under that paradigm, you know, Augustus rebuilds Rome as a city of, uh, city of marble. Uh, Gavin Newsom is going to make it possible for you to get from Los Angeles to San Jose in 45 minutes. Yes. 
Um, now, one thing that's useful about California high-speed rail is the trains say California on the side, so you remember where you are. Um, it's sort of like secession watch, you know? That That's another sort of uh, peg towards A24's Chud versus Woke, right? <laughs> I like. I always enjoy the. I always enjoy. I think there's a fun game to be had when you uh, pick, see what train they've the CGI people have picked to put in their renders. So at the bottom, there's kind of like a, a like a TG like an Alstom TGV type, yeah. type thing in the, in the in the very Dutch coded um, high speed rail in, in the kind of the bottom picture there. The top yes. one it appears to be one of the um, Chinese uh, kind of extremely pointy and and, and slightly. Uh, yeah. Siemens IC Valaro type yeah, looking things. Yeah, it's, it's something like that. Notably lacking a pantograph or overhead wire. There was yeah. a brief period of time where they, a few state senators were trying to convince them to do battery high-speed trains. Jesus Why? Christ. <laughs> that As seems, a California that moment state seems senator is one of the easiest and dumbest people to buy on God's green earth is why. <laughs> <laughs> so long story short about California high-speed rail is... California voters approve a ballot measure to build high-speed rail in California in 2008. They got a legally mandated top speed of 220 miles an hour. There's nice. a lot of drama about construction costs and land acquisition, the right, the correct right-of-way, so on and so forth. Construction, construction takes seven years to get underway. Right now, we're projected to get the, quote, initial operating segment, unquote, in the Central Valley <laughs> between Bakersfield and uh, Merced, in sometime in the 2030s. Uh huh. I never knew oh, what cool. the singular it's, form of Mercedes was. That's good to know. It, it's it's future proof, you know. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. sorry for completely no selling a Mercedes joke. That was very good. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I deserved it. And um, you know, time is money, and we like to spend money, so we're spending a lot of time building this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, it's capitalism, as I say on, uh, as I've been <laughs> saying on Rail Matter repeatedly, related to all sorts of HS2 related stuff. When your entire economy is based on extracting value from the bits around the thing that does a thing, rather than the thing that does a thing itself, um, of course delivering actual things like infrastructure becomes impossibly expensive. That's capitalism, baby. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is, this is first and foremost a way to keep a lot of consultants employed. And oh, the yeah. transportation second, including weirdly <laughs> Network Rail, who are the oh. infrastructure operator in the UK, who are one of the major contract like consulting contractors on no California high speed rail. Oh. Network oh, Rail yeah. taking a Californian vacation, huh? Yep. Oh. Yeah, but the guy who's supposed to be my line manager moved over there. gave gave up on me when I moved to my new job and decided. Shout out to hi Dave. Uh, I moved <laughs> over to California to to work on the California high speed train. Hard to blame him when you look at sort of like oh, I'm doing you know permanent way on a sort of wet wednesday in middlesbrough i could be <laughs> it could be in beautiful california and that you are british you do not know what this bit of california looks like you've never been to Truckee. you don't know it, it's like yeah sure let's do it yeah i'll go to I'll go to beautiful you know i'm expecting you know san francisco constantly 70 degrees and you know beautiful mm. weather year round and actually no i'm here in fresno it's 140 degrees <laughs> and incredibly humid Chino, go and learn what climate empty. change means yeah. uh, by living in it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but you can get the burger you can get what a burger you can get in and out that's so. a good point yeah uh, you know as california high speed rail project is necessary because as slow and expensive as it is the other alternatives which were massive airport expansions or massive freeway expansions sink it to the sea are sink it to the sea they're <laughs> much more expensive and much worse for the environment but people still got mad about it including a rich guy who stole a car company named elon elba <laughs> Elon Musk. <laughs> Elon Musk. Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. Yeah. This fucking oh guy. I, des I yeah. deserve a better class of nemesis, is the thing. <laughs> like, this fucking guy. Yeah. yeah. What? I don't know what there is to say about Elon that hasn't already been He's said. He's a wee fucking dancer, that's what. He, mm. he sells cars and spaceships and he renames websites. Um. Yeah, his Most, whole life is based around one to, getting annoyed about the fact that his he he, tr he thought it was cool when he was like twenty to name a company X, mm -hmm. and then that constantly got taken away from him by him being shit at everything he turns his hand onto, and so he's continued to fail upwards. Yeah, it'd be like if I still yeah. combed my hair forward in the MySpace way, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, we, right can, now, we can both wax nostalgic about the shit we were doing in the 2010s, man. Oh, yeah. Jesus.
right now, a lot of people think he's bad. But back in 2012, this was less obvious unless you were really paying attention. Yeah, everyone was still sucking his dick back then. Yes. From Alice Avazandum, Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got here. We could just do Musk. I think that's probably going to be. That's the safe one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I love that we're all just politely, silently waiting to find out what fun sorry, stuff. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I have um, Elon Musk and Grimes playing cards against humanity. Oh God, that's actually uh, a, a phenomenally good bit. I have, yeah. I have. Uh, I hope Elon Musk builds his dumb tunnel only for both entrances to collapse, leaving him trapped underground where only one man can save him. Elon cries up for help, and Vern Unsworth looks down and whispers, "You're a pedophile." <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, absolute, absolute queen of posting shit. I love that. <laughs> Sorry for doing Twitter review here. Uh, it's fine. We're enjoying it. We're looking at a picture of a of a. A creep, a, a sexual of offender, yeah, abuser, yeah. Uh, apartheid, light. white supremacist, yeah. piece of shit. Um, <laughs> oh, this good. is from 2020. Someday we're going to find out how Elon Musk won that pedo guy lawsuit, and it's going to be some James Elroy shit. <laughs> <laughs> some American tabloid shit. So, um, weird story. Uh, my dad was the guy in charge of that rescue because my dad does cave rescue. No shit, um, really. And really? Yeah. You're doxing your own Whoa. father on on <laughs> podcasts. Uh, pff, I've done it in worse places. Um, and so he knows Vern pretty well. And Vern. So this is why I have like personal hatred of this man uh, alongside professional and uh, other hatred. Hmm. Vern, a fundamentally good man who literally saved a bunch of kids' lives, um, was crushed by that lawsuit, as you'd imagine. Oh, he course. was kind of taken for a ride by the big lawyers. Um, he was quite happy to just let it slide because he didn't give a shit about what uh, what this um, prick said. But, you know, the lawyers are like, oh, we can we can sort it out here, you know, da-da-da-da-da. Well, it should and have then, been a slam dunk, you know? It should like, have been a slam yeah. dunk, but, you know, rich white guys never never lose. Mm. Um, and and it's crushed Vern. So shout out to Vern. I don't, I don't. Hopefully he has no profile on the internet because the internet's horrible, and he can just enjoy caving again. But um, yeah. uh, screw Elon Musk for a million reasons, but particularly for for that. Yes. What was also transparently him being really butthurt? Did I, have I told the story about the fact the Australians nicked his submarine and probably have it somewhere? Yeah, uh, yeah, you have because he he took the fucking submarine prototype to the cave, and no one would let him get near the cave because it obviously wouldn't work. So he just... got it into the first chamber uh, mm. of of maybe two or three hundred. Um, uh, <laughs> And and it obviously just immediately got broken and stuck, uh, and the Australians just nicked it. They thought it was fucking hilarious, so they just nicked it in in true Aussie style. <laughs> See, come on, man! <laughs> they are a, they are a criminal bunch, though. They turned it. They turned it into. Uh, they Back they turned roots. it into. They turned it into a barbecue, or as they say in Australia, a barbie. Yeah, <laughs> either a barbecue or a beer fridge, one or the other. Yeah, well, if it's broken in half, they can have both. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, so anyway, Elon takes a look at the high-speed train he thinks is rubbish. He proceeds. He proposes his own system with blackjack and hookers, the quote-unquote <laughs> fifth mode of transportation, oh my the God. hyperloop. Oh, uh, let's and, let's get old H bomber guy on this on this on, on this man. For mm. it being a quote unquote an original Elon Musk idea. Yes. I mean, much like Tesla was an existing car company that Elon said was his, uh, the Hyperloop is an existing idea that Elon said was his. Yes, yeah, it's a bad <laughs> idea. Yeah. There's some differences between the Hyperloop and uh, VAC trains, but we'll get into how essentially the, the, they became VAC trains. What's the mm, big speak- idea here? Speaking of billionaires, I see Virgin on here, which means Richard Branson's grubbing the uh, hands have been on this as well. Yes. Man twat. with What's an island. Now? A man who owns an island. Yes. Have we learned nothing about men who own islands? Can't you gotta, just leave well enough alone, Richard? Just go. Gotta, and- gotta, gotta watch out for those kinds of people. Yeah. <laughs> just fuck off yeah. your island. Um, Listen, I haven't said anything other than a true fact, which is that Richard Branson is a man who owns a private island. That's all there is to say. That's right. Okay, so there's not quite a vacuum to beep all of the intermediate bit, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah we cannot. We can neither confirm nor deny that uh, Richard Branson is a. Yeah, we can neither confirm nor deny that he is um, a, a British Thai cave diver. <laughs> there's a pod. It's not a train. It's a pod. Yeah, it's in a, a tube. It's your red flag right there. Yeah, whenever someone says pod, 
um, you know it's going to be a bad idea. Um, in America. I, 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 <laughs> I was a tiny <laughs> child, but I I remember saying this of the London Eye, and I was right. That shit has ruined Ooh. the skyline in London. One of my most controversial opinions. Tear it back down. I think it's controversial, sucks. but correct. Thank you. Yeah, the um, you know, when you have a... anytime I see London skyline on anything, it's like, oh, we've got a big fucking Ferris wheel and a circus. Yeah, why do they keep dome. including it on things, like oh. as if it's a feature? It's like it's a fucking Ferris wheel. Why, why are you putting that next to the flipping House of Parliament and the Gherkin? Just like, which incidentally is funny because the Gherkin, you can't see the Gherkin from any angle anymore as well, which is funny. Yeah, it's blocked. Um, that's another story. The, the walkie talkie yeah, and stuff. Yeah. I think it's yeah. uh, like interesting that like every other city decided they needed a big Ferris wheel too afterwards. Ugh. You know, Glasgow had a tiny one as part of like it was. It was literally a fairground Ferris wheel, but they called it the Wheel of Excellence. Um, <laughs> and, they, and they had it in George Square for like six months, and then Edinburgh nicked it. And so now I, I think Edinburgh still has the Wheel of Excellence, like seasonally. Incredible. They have like a, a much smaller one next to it called the Wheel of Mediocrity. Yeah. <laughs> Every day of my life, I'm writing the Wheel of Mediocrity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so. There's a pod. It's not a train. It's a pod in a tube, right? The tube is very low pressure, but it's not a full vacuum. There's a big air compressor here in the front of the pod, right? And that air compressor eats up all of the low pressure air and either ejects it out the back or it puts it through little jets on the bottom, right? That makes the whole thing float in the tube like it's a puck on an air hockey table. Right. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. It's it's that stupid. It is that stupid, Alice. Yep. There's no motor on the train. What there are the pod. It's not a train. It's a pod. That means <laughs> it's like when Margaret Thatcher insisted on the trains being called shuttles on the uh, Euro tunnel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. So um, this thing runs on linear induction motors, right? Which is essentially you have a bunch of magnets on the track. You have magnets on the train, and those are what propel the thing. Uh, it's like a big, it's like a normal electric motor, but instead of being in a circle, it's unwrapped. Come, come out of the thing with all of your credit cards demagnetized. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was refined by a, a, a chap from uh, from Lancashire called uh, Eric Lathwaite. Mm. You can, yeah, find, a couple. you can find the original video of them testing this on YouTube with some great yeah, yeah guy voices. <laughs> Gareth, for listeners, Gareth is reaching behind him to a shelf on which there is a book here called I'm Holding Up to for Everyone Else to See uh, Transport Without Wheels by mm. edited by Eric Leithwaite. Yeah. Ooh. Put it away again. I'm enjoying oh. the little Gareth connections. You know? I, think, Me too. I think it'd be, you know, a transport without wheels. Does that include horses, though? <laughs> Why not? Well, maybe the viscera there are horses so, in the yeah. original Hyperloop. Yeah. yeah when they're sucked into, the, <laughs> sucked into the atmospheric oh. railway. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, there's the linear induction motors are not continuous. There's like a pad every 70 miles or so of linear induction motors that give it a little boost, right? Or this is the original idea in the white paper that Elon Musk uh, He'd posted. He'd been playing Minecraft, hadn't he? Yeah, honestly, though, yeah. Grief. Ugh. That's how powered rails work. Yeah, there's a right. little patch of the, the little red ones, and you go, wee, and then it slows down again. You have to have another one, and you have to shove a redstone down. And Yeah, we've all yeah. been there. Exactly. Well, if you're smart, you use a lever. That's cheaper. Yeah. Oh, I, I oh, oh, man, now I'm thinking about my highly elaborate electrification systems with redstone underneath. Redstone. Oh man, now now I want to play Minecraft. God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so these pods in the white paper sat 23 people, right? And That's they're supposed to leave people. every 30 seconds. Uh-huh. Right? Yep, I'm on so, board. Yeah, I've, yeah I've, that seems yeah. stupid. Let's do this. I know the numbers on this, but I have taken trains before in my life, and of those trains, I would say almost all of them have had more than 30 people on them. Yes, and yes. Uh, they have more than 30 seconds of separation as well. Mm. Yes. Yes. There, the, I have done the numbers on this, Alice. Uh, I'm looking Thank forward you. to being able to interject with them. And yeah. you're right on every... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, in the white paper, this is maximum capacity of 2,760 persons per hour per direction. You know, it's about two subway trains worth of people. Um, yeah, that 2,760 is about a decent, as I often end up saying, that's about as much as a decent bus service. 
Yeah. Right. In fact, not <laughs> even a decent bus service. That's about as much as a as as like a a bus service in Leeds. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> They're supposed to travel at seven hundred and sixty miles an hour. Some oh. of the pods, instead of having room for seats, would have room for people to drive their cars on. Oh, what? This oh, motherfucker here has go. never yeah. built a single thing that he doesn't want you to drive your Tesla onto, into, yeah. over, or under. Yeah. I love the idea of a 700 mile an hour fireball with mm. uh, a load of yeah. Tesla drivers inside yes. it. That's, that pleases me. California High Speed Rail is called out several <laughs> your, times. Your boy Dave is just working on the surface, uh, <laughs> so, you know, somewhere in rural California, and here's like the loudest rumbling in the world, traveling very fast underneath his feet. <laughs> I'm just imagining all the manhole covers popping up into the air with a little bit of flame <laughs> shooting out of each one as it goes. It's like that scene in Batman. Well, no, because this was intended to stop your mate Dave. Yes, it was supposed to defeat Dave. It was supposed to take Dave and defeat Dave and make him uh, homeless. Mm. Oh, has no not going against Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, leave Dave alone. Yeah. California High Speed Rail is called out several times directly for being expensive and slow in the white paper. While this system, the Hyperloop, will be cheap and fast. Keeping in mind, California High Speed Rail has a design speed of 220 miles an hour, which is basically the bleeding edge of high speed rail technology. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the th here, here's the thing, and and, and I, I often use uh, the, the, the I often uh, use phraseologies that I've picked up from uh, my favorite podcasts. Um, this is the thing: you can say stuff, mm. and in this case, the, the, the stuff is mine's faster than yours. Mine's yeah. cheaper than yours, <laughs> right. and yes. that's about as much science has has gone into it. Is the thing, uh, yeah. And as we'll see, that continues to be about as much science has gone into it. <laughs> I was about to say, if you go through the old Elon Musk white paper, uh, you see some of the diagrams in there. And if you don't initially understand the diagram, it looks very fancy and scientific. And if you do understand it, it looks like it was made by a moron. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah. So here's uh, the bait and switch. Elon didn't actually want to build the thing himself. He put it out there as an idea, right? Oh, nice. oh. But unlike ideas for most ideas, guys, entrepreneurs ran with this thing, creating a wide variety of Hyperloop and Hyperloop-esques. Yeah, it, it, it was like the hype in Hyperloop. Right, is yes. Elon Musk yeah. is yeah. distributing this and being like, "Okay, go, go, do this, go kill high speed rail." Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is why I'm not great to go too in depth on the technology aspect of it because the fundamental problems here aren't so much technological as everything else. Right. If you look at <laughs> yeah. you know fifty Hyperloop companies, you'll see fifty different implementations of the similar ideas. Um, now, this, uh, when, when this white paper comes out, there's immediately people who want to capitalize on this by doing renders. Right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> the burgeoning yeah. render industry of California. The, this was my favorite um, part of Hyperloop. And this was like really early. These, I think these are all from like 2014 or so. Um, oh, it's, just, it's proper like early days, yeah. like render on image type stuff. This is, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, these are all from Hyperloop uh, technology. Uh, Oh, Hyperloop transportation is. technologies. Hyper -like them. Tr yeah, those guys, they, they got in early. And what you can see here is Hyperloops obstructing navigable waterways. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> boats. Um, Me and all yeah. my homies hate boats. Yep. I love that they, yep. that, what I love, and this sums up so much about Hyperloop, is that they've looked at fancy high resolution pictures of long span suspension bridges, and they've gone, oh, in fact, they've not gone, they've not done anything. They've gone, huh. I'm just going to put a load of low span, like a short span, low bridge next to that. And that's yeah. fine. I'm not going to learn anything from yeah, this I'm... high bridge with a long span. That, that's that's just there for aesthetics, yeah. right? Like the, the city I've, of New I've York. Heard, are like... I've heard of the Army Corps of Engineers and I don't recognize their authority. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, the city of New York or the state of New York, the state of California aren't going to have any thoughts about me putting this kind of like shitty bridge next to their fancy bridge. Um, yeah. No, but, also, uh, not not to sort of be the sort of security minded person here, but the single easiest and deadliest piece of American infrastructure to attack instantly by virtue of the fact that you have a pressurized tube 
Yeah. <laughs> connected by a bunch of very vulnerable spans across the water. Yeah, no. And also bear in mind that you've got, uh, if you if the morons who are trying to sell this are to be believed, rather than the, um, the actual science um, and legislation about uh, guided vehicles, um, there are, you know, in a thirty-second period, there are like two hundred of these in quick in quick succession. So, um, you split one of these pipes, at, this thing's going to be spitting pods for about thirty seconds. Yeah. And uh, good God, the whether carnage! You, whether you do it intentionally or not, if some like riverboat guy rams his riverboat into it, yeah, there's there's going to be right, right, right. You, you're going to have a little bonk from a garbage barge, and it's going to um. Oh, Kill up. fifty thousand people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here in Philadelphia, we already, put, we already put the trains now. next to the uh, the children's hospital, just to keep <laughs> just to keep them ready. Yeah, and this is this is where you know you sort of look at this and you realize one of the first problems here is anyone who was pushing this scheme did not understand or have a desire to understand something called horizontal construction, mm. right? Where you dig stuff in a line, like the line. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. Is the line horizontal or vertical construction? Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But so, you know, there's two types of construction. There's horizontal construction that's roads, bridges, railroads, so on and so forth, <laughs> as opposed to vertical construction, which is built mostly buildings. Uh, I'm doing right. diagonal construction. I'm trying to do horrors. I'm trying mm -hmm. to do vertical construction, but I'm doing it really badly. That's like those. <laughs> those... Me is one of the city fathers of Pisa. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and this is one of the fundamental, I think, misunderstandings or mischaracterations at the at the core of the Hyperloop proposal is that it's going to be cheap because our guideway is cheap. This is wrongo. Wrong no. Shout out to Devon. I say that so often, either in my head or on Twitter, and it's all I'm channeling Devon every time. Uh, hi, hi, Devon. Um. Anyway, you know, one of the ideas is all right. We have the standardized tube. We have the standardized column. It's going to be real fucking cheap, guys. Right? Um. Lol. But here we can every see every column is bespoke. Every yeah. single one requires yeah. ground investigation. Every single one is a, a bespoke design. There is absolutely nothing. Okay, you can repeat the cross section. But you're doing a trial hole, at, you're doing a borehole at every single one of those piles to adjust for the ground conditions. Each one of those will be bored to a either to a different depth or to such an immense depth that you don't have to worry about it. Both are very expensive. Hole eight one one before you dig. I mean, <laughs> just this them is, calling it over and over and over. It, it's our <laughs> old friend Sandy Loam back again. You know, like the thing that that's defeating Hyperloop here is ground. Yeah. I think that's another one of the the issues with um you know this is this is uh California high speed rail in the central valley they're doing a sort of four track viaduct here that I think goes into one of the stations um this terrain is actually as much as it is extremely flat it's still difficult to build on just because of the geography of the central valley mm. how it's all these uh very deep alluvial deposits right I was going to um, say, like, it might look, the trouble with flat is that lots of stuff gets, you don't get the nice uh, deposit, depositions of mountain areas where it all kind of sorts itself out. When it's flat, it's, it's a load of all the different colored soups all smoosh into each other, and it's all very uh, heterogeneous. Yeah, and it's uh, it's also seismically active, and also, you know, every hundred years or so, it floods to 20 feet, so... <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, there's there's a lot of problems even with building on the flat, which is, you know, what, what they assume, okay, it's all going to be the same as long as we're building on the flat, you know, and you can do, you know, horizontal construction, you wind up with lots of different conditions just because it goes so far. Down here, you can see here's a huge right away they got to clear for Trend Maya, right? Because not only do you need to the actual space for the right of way, you need space to work in. Um you know, and you're also building over. In this case, it's also very flat, but because it's the Yucatan Peninsula, it's full of holes underneath. Um, yeah, full of holes, lemurs, sort of like rare plants. Uh, yes. Um, jaguars. Mm -hmm. Subjugated uh, cultures, things of yes. this nature. Yeah. Things of this nature, yes. So, you know, this all, any, any of these generic guideway designs are cheap until you actually build the damn thing in the real world. Um <laughs> And that's sort of how you sell 
what you would call a gadget bond anywhere, which is something that's not a train and its main feature is it's not a train. It's like, well, you know, the guideway is cheaper. How well, is it cheaper? As blah, 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 blah. We've never built one, so it's it's probably so we cheap. We haven't built any, so we don't know. We can mark our own homework. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, in, a, in this controlled or theoretical environment is cheaper than rail, and then it turns out, actually, if you put two steel rails on some planks and some gravel, it turns out to be even cheaper than whatever fancy guideway <laughs> you have. <laughs> Yeah, because you stop having to do a bespoke uh, bit of ground investigation for every single column. Suddenly, you can kind of be like, oh, we can come back with a tamper and even that up. Let's yeah. just put it on a continuous squidgy uh, beam. That's fine. I ballast with rails on it. Happy days. Yeah. That's another interesting problem with building in the uh, Central Valley um, because it's so flat. There's nowhere to get fill from. Yeah, just put it straight on the ground. No problem. Yeah, you put it straight on the ground, but if you got to go over a road, then you got to have like an artificial dip somewhere else. I mean, I, I assume that is why they're using. Um, I assume that is on on California HSR there. I assume that is why they're using the um, the, the the supporting columns for a, for a viaduct rather than just fill. Yeah, I mean that's definitely one of the reasons. The and then other reasons we'd have to go into a whole episode for that. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, I've been storing up a California high speed rail yeah. rail matter because it's such a. Uh, to be honest, Lost I feel like fuck. more of it needs to happen before it becomes an episode. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here's where I start seal- stealing slides from Gareth nice. <laughs> about about capacity. Here we go. Um, oh yeah, I need to talk here. Right. Okay. So yeah, <clears throat> I'm spooling up. Um, firstly, apologies that all the text is weird on these. I, I these are from Real Matter in, in in a funny font, and that font uh, not everyone has it. <laughs> because people are normal about oh. fonts. Uh, so this, this, this is a sketch I did for a, for a Twitter thread I did ages ago to debunk um, Hyperloop. And it was based on the fact that all the Hyperloop kind of discussions, including that this was that there's like a Colorado sort of study that talked about this. And, and you look at all of them and, and there, there were two discussions happening about Hyperloop. One of them, um, is as as Justin's already alluded to, is um, the technology itself. They're going, oh, you know, we're talking about the the technology, the the vacuum tubes, the the switches, all the and and the discussions are like people would get busy talking about, oh, is the technology viable? Isn't it viable? Vacuum this, that, the other. The other discussion they'd have is, oh, well, there's this enormous if you if you create high speed transport, there's this enormous demand, this enormous economic benefit of doing that, and this would basically be this circular loop of either the reports talking about. Isn't the technology marvelous? Isn't the isn't it going to be wonderful when we have high speed transport? And they kept going round and round in circles, and none of them addressed the the um, the key issue, which is you will transform the economic um, sum total of uh, zero if your technology uh, doesn't move anyone. Which is what yes. because it's a pod. That's what Hyperloop did. Alice has already alluded to this mm. with the there are only twenty people in this thing. Uh, question mark uh, point, which is that it's a thing called system capacity. System capacity is really easy to calculate. You uh, you go, how many people are in the vehicle? How many vehicles travel through the thing an hour? And yes, uh, Roz is absolutely right. I've put up the SUVAT equations because this is a capacity yeah. question. Um, the SUVAT equations are, if you didn't, I don't know if they call them that in the US, but certainly in the UK, they call, the SUVAT equations uh, are basically the equations uh, of of motion based around like acceleration and time and distance. So like S is displacement here in these uh, in in this equation. Uh, v and U are initial and final uh, speeds. A is acceleration. T is time. Um, and you can do a whole bunch of fun calculations to work out um, using this equation the distance between your vehicles. So if your vehicles are going really really slowly, um, then you can have them quite close together because the distance it takes for them to stop is short and so actually the thing that dominates the speed the distance between them stops being like how fast they go and how quickly they break why is this is because uh, both legally and from an obvious safety perspective you want to have a safe braking distance between your vehicles so that if one uh, is uh, has a problem has to break the one behind it won't kablamo straight into it yeah. and result in your um, massive multi-pod pileup. So you have to have a safe separation, and that safe separation is the distance it take the distance it takes to, um, or the time it takes for the vehicle to stop, plus some tolerances for like reaction times of either the person or the technology. Right. So in the case of a train like uh, the Hyperloop nonsense, um, their trains are going sorry pods are going at like mm-hmm. fast enough like well like a thousand kilometers an hour or or seven hundred miles an hour, whatever the number they've made made up off the off the top of their heads and so the separation you're looking at is like minimum f- about 30 to 40 seconds 
right? Minimum. That's quite a short period of time. Great. Marvellous. The trouble is if your pods have 20 people in them, then that means that you're moving the jack, to- the, 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 the grand sum of like two, three, or maybe in a, a, a magical sense, 4,000 people an hour. Um, bearing in mind that high speed rail, like HS2, if they hadn't been, if, if Sunak hadn't uh, kneecapped it, was going to carry around about 20,000 passengers per hour. So that's quite a lot more. Um, uh, there is another technology that carries this small a number of people um, over long distances at high speeds with large amounts of uh, infrastructure, and that is business jets. So business jets are probably a lot cheaper and 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 indeed higher capacity to just have buy a load of business jets and run them from A to B rather than building this system. So that's a key thing, capacity, system capacity. This thing is a huge amount of infrastructure being built. As Ros has explained, the same amount of infrastructure as if you just built a train, and yet what it's going to do is move almost nobody. Yeah. This is and, not a good use of, of resources. And like your only your only option here is like, okay, maybe you can somehow make the pods bigger. But that's also going to like increase your curve radius, the size of your infrastructure, or horror of horrors, you make them into a train, which is also questionable. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of fluid dynamics issues with 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 the train getting longer. Um, it reaches uh, a, a weird German guy's name limit, um, and, and, mm. and it becomes, which is one of the reasons why the pod sort of idea elevated is because you, you struggle to actually get a longer thing through the 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 the, the kind of the the low uh, pressure environment. You know um, you're really fucked in physics when there's a long German guy. I know, yes. right? Yeah, yeah God. Um, but the other thing is um, that uh, if it looks too much like a train, then people will put two and two together and realize that it's all a scam. Because all train. of this, it has to look like pods because it has to, firstly, it has to look like cars to the car people. But secondly, if it looks too much like a train, it starts breaking the suspension disbelief and you start going oh it looks like a train but it's wrong and that doesn't make sense if you if your brain goes that's a train but bad then then the the illusion falls right so that's why these things have to look that they have to have pods they have to look like somehow they're some magical fifth way rather than just being bad backwards trains yes and i think a good comparison here um if you're more if you want a, a, a more layman's comparison the amount of infrastructure you're building for the capacity of the hyperloop let's try and <laughs> let's try and uh convert that to chinatown buses yeah. um yeah. Yeah. so consider this is the Funghua bus uh which did new york to boston new york to philly a few other places right it has 60 seats um there was also some seats uh, uh, up above for live chickens sometimes um <laughs> right and so for all this heavy construction and technological development, groundbreaking new technology you're developing to put in this Hyperloop system, you get the same performance as 46 coach buses departing per hour. <laughs> um, <laughs> build, and, instead of high-speed rail, build Chinatown buses from yeah. Sacramento to Los Angeles. That's exactly yeah. what Richard Wellings of the Institute of Economic Affairs wants to do. And I'm not even joking. He has written so many papers saying to replace existing railway lines with uh, lots of coaches. And indeed, we were going to do it out of Marleybone. We were going to do this to the Chilton Main Line. Uh, Alice, this will this will hit you different. Um, we were going to do this. There were pl- genuine plans to do this to the Chilton Main Line, which was to convert it into a bus. Busway with high speed buses like I, this. I will not take <laughs> that was, the mega bus. I that was an onion bus. article. That was an <laughs> onion article of the high, okay. Obama's high speed rail system what if, being downgraded to high speed buses. <laughs> what, what, if, what if we just ran these buses so quickly together that we could hook them together in sequence? And what if instead of a roadway, we had their own sort of like dedicated lane? And what if instead of tracks, it was uh, instead, of, instead of a road, it was like some kind of like uh metal track ballasted with stuff um and what if instead of like tires we gave them like steel wheels um Cut was, mike. Cut mike. <laughs> there was there was a guy there was a guy who worked at the cato institute randall o'toole but this is also his hobby horse all trains should be replaced How with are buses just neoliberal um, bus guys just growing yeah. on stuff like fungus <laughs> the thing is 46 <laughs> bus departures an hour is a lot of bus departures but it's nowhere near the limit of bus terminal technology as shown here 
at the Port Authority bus terminal in New York City, which uh, <laughs> yeah. serves 450 buses per hour at the morning peak. So what you're Jesus. telling me is we run this concurrently 24-7, fuck the carbon emissions whatsoever, um, and we get 10 California high-speed rails. Build I'm more not, buses! Not yes. seeing a downside but beyond the fact that yep. the journey takes like seven hours. Like there's so many. Like we don't want to get into the into the pig and shit technology stuff, but yeah. they're they're like it's not really technology to point out some of the systemic issues here. Like there are so many points of failure with a system like this. You also because you're talking about lots of because each individual bus has to carry around all of its stuff, all of its technology for a relatively small number of um, of passengers. That's a lot of weight, and because it's on tires, it's damaging. You, you require quite a lot. So, so you have to build a very strong roadway, which is expensive. The Port Authority bus terminal is very heavily built structure to deal with all this yes. mass it, it it's it is not an efficient use of resources including the expensive bit of transport which is drivers yes. how many drivers have we got here for like how many fewer drivers if it was trains i would assume oh, there's golly. 450 buses per hour and there's 450 drivers per hour <laughs> what hopes yeah I, I hope all the buses have drivers uh, yeah. You have don't to move do it to Edinburgh where they're trying to take the driver out of the bus. Good, oh, good no. God. Hold on. I, driverless bus, you know. I stupidly <laughs> did not use the restroom before starting the podcast. Uh, I'm going to go it's do fine. That real it's quick. fine. We'll riff for a bit. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, we'll riff for a bit. We'll, we'll, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, so this is the thing the, the Chinatown bus is an Americanism. I would do this in terms of Megabus. Um, and <laughs> I, I don't mean to single out Megabus as a brand specifically. There oh, are but a few we should. of them. The, the bus with Dara Breen on the back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. Should. yeah, yeah. Uh, th th this is like the real dire shit. Uh, if if the like train system has failed for one reason or another, then Britain's last line of logistical defence is getting the Megabus. Um, at, like, run by angry homophobic Scottish men. Yeah, that's 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 the mm -hmm. thing that unifies basically all buses in in the UK. Is they're all run by like True. two angry Scottish Ryan uh, homophobes. Yeah, um, and yeah. yeah, so you end up at like you know a bus station in Preston at three in the morning, or for instance, you miss the last train from Edinburgh back to Glasgow, and you need to get back to Glasgow rather than staying overnight. Well, the only thing that does that rather than a twenty four seven train service is a bus, um, and. Ugh. Uh, a circ sort of minor circle of hell, you know? I, I did it once. I, I got the bus from, for some bizarre reason, uh, mostly probably skint student. Yeah. Um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to not get the train from oh, London to, to Aberystwyth. And I got the bus from London Victoria Coach Station mm. um, all the way to Aberystwyth. And let me tell you, given that that's one of the, at the time, was one of the least punctual bits of railway line, good God, I would have loved to be on a train stationary in a flood um, mm -hmm. uh, near Telerthig Loop rather than in that hell bus. Like the bus had aircon, it was you know it was fine as a bus. In fact, you know, arguably comfortable as a bus. Yet somehow it's hell. Long distance bus journeys. Oh my They're god! I don't. Fun. I just not fun. no. Mm. Get the train. Difficult to get up and walk around. You know. That's it, isn't it? You're stuck in place. Whereas you can stretch your leg. You can go and find a quiet corner of the coach to fart in. You just can't <laughs> do that in a bus. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Bus, so, uh, bus, a... long, long distance bus toilets as well. No, um, thank you. There's a funny idea. Don't go in there if you want to retain. <laughs> no, uh, you full full psychic psychic don't, yeah. don't, don't go in there if you're as wide as I am. If you have hips as wide as mine, you want to get back out again. You know that you're doing a confined space rescue uh, at that oh. point. Yeah. I'm back. I was, I was talking, talking about of, talking of returning from the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the anyway. Hyperloop pod would have a toilet in it. Oh, now that's it's, what's funny is can you imagine if got the suction wrong and, and yeah. <laughs> fully sucks you out yeah, of that yeah, yeah, and spits yeah. you into that, the tunnel. Does the kind of like U boat thing if you can just sink the hyperloop pod using it incorrectly. Well, now you have to you have to stay there and plug the hole with your ass until you get to the station. <laughs> mm. <laughs> hey, that, I suppose would that be a, is that an enema? No, it'd no. be a um, kind of colonic irrigation. It, you'd be, it, I mean, you'd be very clean right the way up through there. Very, very. Sort of the world record for uh, anal prolapse, you know. <laughs> oh no! Thank you no. for that sentence. Uh, just yeah. get sort of like Jim Henson all the way out for your asshole. Yeah, you have yeah. To, uh, uh, yeah. Call up Guinness for see, that this one. This is the thing I have a I have a way with words that makes people want to listen to the podcast. Uh, I 
Yeah, I, I even said to somebody that I was going to make them a slutty little elbow. I'm not going to say who I said that to. <laughs> <laughs> Two ways of reading that, potentially. Did you, was, was it to Justin in anger, is no, my first question. It, was, yeah. it is actually to read pretty frequently. That was going to be my second question, was, was it to your now wife? Yeah, did you oh. later marry this person? Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, we had, oh. Yeah. Sorry, Alice's Jim Henson line. I will not recover from that for the rest of my life. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, Hyperloop Alternative 1, the uh, Feng Hua Chinatown bus, fairly easy, much cheaper. Um, but if, you know, we're getting serious about this, we should talk about serious high-speed rail. Oh, now right. you're talking my language. Yes. Um, and the purpose of high-speed rail, you got to remember, it's it's capacity first and foremost. The speed Look at this beautiful, is, big, shoe-looking you know, motherfucker right here. Yeah, exactly. speed is, the speed is useful because you drive modal shift, but also because you need fewer trains uh, to achieve the, the throughput. The faster the train, the fewer the, you know, the, the faster it gets between destinations, the fewer of those trains you need to buy, which means you get smaller depots, which means there's lower electricity consumption, uh, fewer drivers. Overall, the system works well. Obviously, there are other benefits of release capacity in the existing network, but I'm not going to talk about that because that's, this isn't real matter. Yeah, it's, that, 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 it's one of the counterintuitive things about um, operating trains is the faster you go, the cheaper it is. Yes. Mm. The EU did a very interesting study, and it was the, the EU's totally um, uh, resultless uh, year of rail a few years back. And they did a very oh. interesting study, they had a genuinely interesting bit of academic work looking at externalities. Um, which is a fancy way of saying thinking about more than just the cost of building the thing in the first place. Um, and the only mode of transport that actually pays for itself is high-speed rail. Yeah. All the others have externalities like health impacts, pollution impacts, um, all these sorts of secondary effects, including rail, you know, some of the side effects of rail, of conventional rail, that means that they cost, that the overall cost to, to a country for that particular transport system is negative. The only one where that isn't true, including aviation, the only one that, is, that isn't true is, uh, is high-speed rail, which does pay for itself. For huh. this very reason, it's a eff very efficient way of moving people around. The, the, the faster you go, the cheaper it is because the bills can't catch up with you. Right. Yes, especially when you don't pay them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your way, especially, especially when you... When you stop, uh, you stop running TGV La Poste. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And looking in the mirror, and there's one of the like Royal Mail trains, also a really sexy train. There's yeah. the class C three two five. Three two five. That's right. Oh, I love them so much. It's See, got the body of a three nineteen, but the face of a three six five. Very, yeah, very, yeah, yeah. Uh, very strange. Or face um, of a networker. Sorry, the three six five had the funny happy face added in in, in retrospect. Yeah, the networker. Real, the, UK the, Rail Nerds, GB mm, Rail Nerds out there. You know what I mean? Oh, of course. The the old networker, my favorite train because I used to get it to school. Uh, very yeah. uh, like pleasant associations with the you know noise. Um, but yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you look over in the rear view mirror, you see one of those gaining on you, you know? <laughs> but only three days a week. Yeah. Well, this is a very topical <laughs> yeah, comment. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, everyone. So, so this is the N700 series Shinkansen. Oh. It has 16 cars. It has about a, a 1,500 seats. It accelerates to 170 miles an hour in three minutes. It runs 17 times an hour at the peak. Oh, uh, right? what are we doing? You know, <laughs> why? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Huh. And, that's a capacity of 25,500 people per hour per direction, or the equivalent of 111, 230 seat Boeing 737 MAX 10s. That's yeah, or, which, you know, discounting the ones that the wings fall off. Yeah. yeah. Or using the Hyperloop capacity we discussed earlier, nine Hyperloop tubes per direction. So still less than the full capacity Port Authority bus station building. <laughs> yes, actually, it is still less than the Port Authority bus terminal. Um, <laughs> well, you got to think about bus terminal is an affront to God. We we cannot yeah. stress this enough. Yeah. Well, think think about uh think about a rack of eighteen hyperloop tubes, and now imagine it having an intersection with another rack of 18 Hyperloop tubes. <laughs> it's gonna, I love it's... pointing this out to people. I was on the BBC, on BBC, like BBC's, uh, one of their radio shows, and, and was pointing this precise fact out. And I don't think, uh, Rory Catalan Jones, uh, hello Rory, is, gave me my first BBC appearance talking about the bloody Hyperloop. Um, uh, Rory Catalan Jones found this very funny and his colleague didn't quite believe me um, and, and subsequently has said, uh, she owes me a pint because of Hyperloop going down the toilet. But yeah, this is the key point to understand. That's that's such a good visualization. Hyperloop Pod is about the same size as a, as, a, as, as this train that we're looking at on screen right now, the N700. It's about the same size. Imagine nine or 10 or 11 or 12 of these 
bearing in mind that the pod seemed to get smaller as the Hyperloop development continued. So they ended up going from like 20 down to like 18 or something. They started at 40 and then it got smaller and smaller. 20 of these tubes next to each other going across the landscape. Bearing in mind the other point about Hyperloop is that all of the technologies pushing the, te- all the companies pushing the technology, none, none of them talked about boring this underground. All of them, the business model that they, it was to do with them selling air rights, question mark, and, and having, uh, uh, solar panels on the outside of the thing so they all of them have modeled it on an above ground system with 20 tubes to to have the equivalent capacity of a high-speed rail system 20 tubes running across the surface of the earth for when you know we're on the planet could you do that spaced commuters from san francisco <laughs> to san jose you would you would you, you would have an intersection with these things if there's a branch line and if you looked at it, you would enter some kind of Lovecraftian psychosis. <laughs> it would be a, a, a cognito hazard if you looked at that tangle of tubes. Um, yeah, yeah. I just, oh my god. Yeah. Just, yeah. A, a, a brief word of note on the on the Japanese Shinkansen. The reason these things accelerate so insanely quickly is, is partly because they have lots of stations frequently together, but also they like the engines on these, the motors on these things have only got more powerful. They make them super, much like kind of stereotypical Japanese housing. They make these things super light, like to the point where they don't have great crashworthiness. Oh. And the reason they do that is because they build the infrastructure such that it has, you know, bearing in mind it has to be super earthquake proof. They build the infrastructure to have basically zero percent failure rate. Uh, this is not a thing we can do in Europe, which is why our trains have to have crashworthiness. But the, the these trains are unbelievably lightweight, and and they can do that. They've thought of the safety system. They've taken a different approach to what we've taken in Europe for high speed rail. Uh, but the Japanese trains are super light. They have motors that are way more powerful than anything in the rest of the world. And as a result of that, these things accelerate unbelievably quickly. We're, you know, we're talking like a rocket powered shit off a shovel. It's good stuff. Mm. And they've never crashed one. Nope. <laughs> they've had earthquakes. They've had the track dislocated by earthquakes. Um, but they have a system that is that, that can detect those sorts of failures. They have infrastructure that's built to last. They have designed a system that's phenomenally safe. It's very, very impressive. Honestly, spectacular. There's a reason why people still th- imagine this stuff as world leading, because it is. Mm. You know, what always amazes me about these things is in Japan, um, no eminent domain. Uh, yeah. No, no compulsory purchase. No, no nothing like that. Um, somehow they still get stuff built. Uh, <laughs> yeah, people believe in it. You know, they, they people really vigorously believe in this stuff. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I, one of the things I find aggravating is I look at Google Maps. Everywhere in the world, train just just invisible on Google Maps. Right? Uh, not in not in Japan. The Shinkansen shows up really like brightly as a, as, as you know, the Shinkansen routes are really. Like vibrant on, yeah, on Google I mean, Maps. This, this, this is, is part the of the thing. Japanese psyche. Like this is yeah. a fundamental part of their of their of their lines of communication. It, it, it might be premised on a lot of like alarmingly conservative and often frankly racist ideas, but Japanese social cohesion is no joke. Um yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you look at our sort of like social discohesion, um and so yeah, it's a disco cohesion Elysium. We're dancing. Yeah. It's uh it's 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 maybe not so good. It's got some downsides, you know. So anyway, this train with massive capacity i'm not saying um, we have to be more racist yeah let's not be more racist and have no immigration Alice, there are other ways say to that? Social no, I, I, i'm saying that Alice, maybe one of, that? one of the ways that we could be more socially cohesive is embracing diversity just a thought yes oh nah so nah. this train because it accelerates very quick it could make lots of intermediate stops still maintain a high average speed serves more people brings them to more destinations um, now, what Elon proposed uh, in terms of capacity was enough for existing travel demand from Los Angeles to San Francisco. You have to factor in induced demand at that point, which Elon does not believe in. So mm. that's why, you know, I, if you're going to build a real system, you need you, you need this capacity. Shed loads of capacity. You need, yeah, you need you need Shinkansen and not Chinatown bus. Mm. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, yeah, so you need dedicated high-speed rail on dedicated right-of-way. Hyperloop cannot do that capacity just definitionally, uh, just, you know, going to laws of physics unless you decide we're going to build a tube big enough for something the size of a 737 to go mm. through. You know? <laughs> All right, hear me out. We put the Chinatown bus in the tube. <laughs> I think we do already, Whoosh. don't we? Yeah. 
yeah, under the river. Yeah. yeah, the express bus lane on the uh, on the Holland Tunnel. Yeah. What if that had no air in it? Or is it the Lincoln <laughs> well, Tunnel? The it's the Lincoln on the top Tunnel. Floor of the bus die. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can't have that. Um, you know, Very and Chinatown the... bus with a kind of like air bladder on the top, like the old gas powered vehicles from World War One. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. And there's always one thing that irks me about this is the stations. Oh my god! For these things, um, what am I looking at here? Where where are all these people going in and coming out? Where are all these pods stacking up? Like what's what's going it's on here? It's all renderite. It's all yeah. weird yeah. curves. And There's I mean, no... I, I we did Art Deco. I mean, um, Art Nouveau. I like a weird curve, but like when it's done with some degree of intentionality. Well, yeah, exactly. It's always <laughs> like totally absent, like the actual circulation of the vehicles and the people. Mm. Like there's just there's there's no discussion no, of what there, these there. stations are going to look like. I would guess they would look more like the Port Authority bus terminal. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, like the one in the bottom uh, right-hand corner, but just like multiply that by four, mm, so yeah. that it takes up like you know, like like a hundred blocks. It's like a fidget spinner. I like the one I on mean, the top kind of... right with the like absolutely no sort of separation of one of those pods goes off the rails? Question mark. It's yeah. just gonna wipe out everybody. I mean, I would imagine. I would imagine you. Um, you know, you 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 would you would get the hyperloop out to the hyperloop terminal, and you'd wait in a queue for like. 35 minutes to get to the platform you know with any of these designs i mean there's there's just there's no capacity here for having it doesn't have to be it comes back to the 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 core point which is that all this has to do is look vaguely plausible right that's all these pictures have to do is look vaguely plausible to the layperson that's all these renders have to do is make it seem like it's legit and whilst for for like for all for all of us we look at this these things and laugh yeah. For unfortunately, the vast majority of people, and in fact, no, the people that count, which is tech journalists, they see this and think it looks legit because it vaguely looks like city skylines. Right, right, yeah. I mean, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be able to transport in. Uh, I assume four hundred thousand passengers per hour. <laughs> well, whatever I, is yeah. happening underneath this roof. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, we just have to believe. Um. All right, I stole more rail natter slides. Hooray, let's talk hooray. about the companies. Uh, let's talk about companies. Right, this is fun. This is this is fun nonsense because um, there are so many of these. Um, so this, the first thing we're going to talk about this group of companies <laughs> that invented a made up uh, trade association called Hyperloops Association. As I said in rail natter, this is not me blowing up their logo to like make it all choppy. Um, they actually have a choppy logo on their website, despite being like tech nerd people. Anyway. Um, <laughs> You suck, guys. Um, Hyper uh, Hyperloop. Blue. One. Let's wow, start with this Hyperloop. Is a real one. good '90s font. I like this. Like I know, it's... right? It is. <laughs> it's that's so. Um, again, apologies for the typeface situation. I, I should have sent Ross Appleberry. It's a bit like Liam. You get mad at Ross for hard drives. I should have got. I should be getting mad at Ross for not having a font that no one has on I their concur. on their computer. I'd... Yes. Um, Hyperloop One here, uh, as we all know, this used to be Virgin Hyperloop One. It was founded in 2014, the year after the Alpha Paper. Um, based in the USA. Uh, the last real update was in November 2020, and uh, its current status, as we all know, because that's why this episode is happening, is liquidation. Yeah, it's um, 
Yeah, yeah, it's defunct. gone. It's you being bye. mined for assets. And this mm. is important because this is the only company that actually shoves some people through a tube. <laughs> two people and two they didn't people. look very comfortable about it even though they're very high paid executives in the organization yeah in fact they looked a lot like they didn't want to be in there i mean and they they they, they brought them up to 107 miles an hour in a 500 meter tube wow um you know and then they slowed them back down again and then they left the tube and that was the crude hyperloop test and then r.i.p yeah slowly over time What's it funny is that within months of that test, they made half their staff redundant. Yes. So it, uh, it went well. Because this is the thing. This I, I don't want to dwell on this too much because uh, we, we need to um, f- f- close the episode within four or five hours. But <laughs> um, the, 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 it touched reality. This is the problem with the Hyperloop stuff. As soon as it touches reality, people realize it's stupid as shit. So this this video went out. And it actually just got, like, they put out all the comms for this, and it got pilloried. It got absolutely slammed, including by, finally, the tech journalists caught up and actually realized, oh, this is shit. This is just shit. And everyone realized, and, and it burst the bubble. And as a result of that, because all these things exist as is a load of, is, is vapor. You know, there's a reason this stuff gets called vaporware. It exists as just noise, just hype. As soon as it touched reality, very these two people touched reality, and the whole thing, the bubble burst, and all, the, all their share price disappeared. All the investors were like, "Oh wait, this is shit," and um, and and it died, uh, or uh, rather, it didn't die. Uh, as Ross is about to press another button, yes. it pivoted. It pivoted. It pivoted. Now, I will note it's not vaporware because it's an evacuated tube. There's no there's no vapor <laughs> in there. It's yeah, that's actually true. less that's than that. Um, yeah, that's, well, that's eventually. A fair point. They pivoted to, okay, maybe this passenger hyperloop stuff is going to be impractical, so we're going to do something more stupid. What if I you like need... you talking about this so much, Roz. I love, I love it when you talk about freight hyperloop. <laughs> what if you needed a 40-foot container of something instantly? Now, TGV La Poste, clearly. <laughs> the list of people who need a 40-foot container of something instantly is like limited to people doing like I don't know human smuggling. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I I don't understand. I mean, if you if you are shipping <laughs> large volumes of cargo that need to go somewhere quickly, right now you don't do it in a shipping container. You do it in a fifty three foot dry van or whatever the equivalent in Europe is. You do it with a truck trailer. I right. just realized how big a 40 foot container is and I've just imagined a TGV hauling one of these on a flatbed and I'm going to be thinking about that <laughs> for the next several hours. <laughs> There's... So the idea of the cargo hyperloop is you're shipping these containers around at hundreds of miles an hour but if you're shipping containers inland usually they just came off a boat from China or Europe which took several weeks <laughs> so you're shaving off a couple days from the schedule that's several weeks yeah. you, you using do the last mile really 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 really, really fast. quick yeah and chances are you're shipping it inland only a few miles to a distribution center. Yeah, no one where has everything's... like a railroad spur, and absolutely no one has a hyperloop spur, so it's got to go on a truck again. Yeah, yeah it's got to go back on a truck, and since it's a container, you got to worry about the container chassis, which are a horrible perennial problem with people shipping containers. That's, again, that's why the 53-foot dry van is nice, has the wheels on it. You've got to do... Wheels are you've attached. Gotta, you've got to build some kind of... <laughs> container terminal that can handle one of these coming in every 30 seconds at a billion miles uh, an hour at a billion miles an hour into like uh, and, and then take it out put it on a truck and get that truck out of the door in time to then be ready for the next one yeah and i mean we sort of have that at like major ports sure. you have the automated like overhead cranes yeah, that it drops run on rails to a train yeah, it drops them onto a train, or you have like the, the thing where five trucks line up at the end of the thing, yeah, yeah. but all the drivers have to get out and hold a button because it might accidentally drop a container on the cab because it's automated. Um, 
it's uh, those things are pretty crazy. They got a, uh, they're, they're very very high capacity and they're very efficient. But you have they, all these you get your fail do, do, yeah. do all five drivers have to hold one button? Because that sounds very intimate. If so, no. There's there's Ooh. five separate buttons. Yeah. Oh, that that the first fan fiction bubble. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a shame. Yeah. yeah. On the AOS, otherwise someone like might five separate truck drivers. <laughs> otherwise, someone might stay in the cab and get crushed by a container of soybeans. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have all this incredible efficient technology, the automation, the cranes, um, the, the the weird relationship with organized labor at the port, um, the, the all this good stuff, um, and you get your containers onto the train, um, and then it goes onto the single track with short loops section of line from Felixstowe to Ely, yeah. which is where <laughs> almost all of Britain's stuff comes from. <laughs> so the most sabotageable infrastructure. No, <laughs> do not do this. Yeah. Do not do this. Just British think you could have police mortar platoon will hunt you down yeah <laughs> you could have something that gets the containers there much faster but at a much lower capacity for no reason um so this was the secondary idea is let's do car hyperloop cargo and they found out um no one actually wants this yeah this i mean this is already an idea like the, they're trying to find a niche for it now yep. that it's fallen through right. uh on passenger freight uh, passenger and, and what's funny is that the only people who care transport. about freight are freight people mm. and all the fr unlike passenger stuff where lay people and just regular people go oh i i, I move oh no but that's a no. thing freight with. people do nothing without several hours of spreadsheets they play football manager for fun they frighten me yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, so those the idea of pivoting from passengers where you have you know millions of stupid people who think oh that's actually a, a thing and to pivoting to freight where everyone is a maniac yeah it's um, a, guy as called, like, highlights. a guy called torsten who is never been a second <laughs> late or early for anything in his life <laughs> they're going to laugh you out of town and that's exactly what the new investor after virgin ran away uh, dp world lol uh tune into all previous trash features um dp world then decided to invest um and then immediately decided to disinvest um hence the demise of hyperloop because yeah. funnily enough freight was an even dumber idea than passenger hyperloop dp world being dubai ports not the other kind of dp uh, <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, Ro, I don't know, Roz, if there was anything more you wanted to say about this. I, I, I love it when you talk about Hyperloop Cargo. I all I can say is I don't I don't understand. I you know I think there's pe people people are too obsessed with containers um, when a lot of stuff doesn't go in containers and in fact shouldn't go in containers. Bring back like, brake bulk. Bring back yeah. the longshoreman. Yeah, yeah. Or, or oh, now this maybe Hyperloop would work I mean, if you if you got a load of longshoremen to like fill it with uh, you yeah, know like fill it with potatoes or whatever. Just sacks. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, a green you know, carrier Hyperloop pod. <laughs> oh man. Never well, saw. the thing that's wild is since there's so much excess capacity heading back to China that we've gone back to like 19 or like 1880s methods of handling cargo. Which is, you know, um, you have a, a container and you put a plastic sleeve in it and then you fill that with bulk soybeans, right? As opposed to having like a bulk soybean freighter, which, you know, is what you would have done in like the 70s. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're back to we're back to grain doors like on old fashioned boxcars. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, uh, so yeah. Uh, so that's the end of of Hyperloop One. Bye bye. Yeah, uh, Hyperloop bye -bye. One. Bye bye. Uh, and then we land with the other. So these are kind of in a, in a, in 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 like order of ish bigness yeah. of, of what they achieved. How many we're going to blast through here? And we're on slide twenty six out of sixty two. So uh, yeah, well you better done. believe I'm going to pick up some speed. Don't yeah. worry, uh, like Liam. Hyperloop. You're making that damn date. Thank um, you. <laughs> So Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, uh, founded even earlier, 2013, again, USA, uh, founded by, um, uh, it's, there's, in fact, they're all, again, listen to the trash feature that Roz is on, um, yeah. uh, where there, there's so many weird little guys involved in this. This the Hyperloop Transportation Technologies had a weird little guy. So um, Hyperloop One had, uh, what was his name? Uh, he, oh. he recently renamed himself to something else, uh, oh, which is also kind of funny. Did, did, yeah, 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 hold on. Uh, Bam Bam, Bro Brogany Bam Bam. Um, <laughs> yeah, Brogan, Brogan, Bam, Brogan. That's the one. Brogan, Bam, Bam Brogan. I shouldn't yeah, make fun of people. His name to Brogan, Bam. I mean, changing your name to something silly is only cool when the name is cool or you're trans. Correct. Right. Um, so this was this the guy involved in Hyperloop Transportation Technologies was Bebop Gresta. We're going to touch on this guy uh, later. Uh, the, the, those words used 
possibly more accurately than I intended them to be. The current status of Hyperloop transportation technology is that they have made two mock-up pods. They've had a test track in France rejected, and they've run out of money because they've merged with some other organization, yeah. uh, like the, some weird sort of fund. Uh, so they're dying. Bye bye. I, I hate to say it, but Brogan Van Brogan left acrimoniously uh, with them. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. Bad, pub, um, bad uh, p- HR. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So next one. Let's go. So from the USA, we must head north to. Canada. Canada. Uh, 2015, we had a thing called Transpod um, uh, founded. Uh, this is uh, a funny name. This is, this is a, 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 in fact, on, on the rail matter, people in the chat made the joke that this sounds like actually quite a good podcast for trans people. Mm. I was Transpod. thinking that you, you come out oh, the no other station when you, when you, when you take the, when you take the Transpod, you come out the other station, a different gender. <laughs> <laughs> Based in Canada, but, um, of course. Yeah. Based in Canada. Um, found in 2015. Its last real update was um, n- none ever. It's done so many little press releases about nonsense. This is oh, the really one is that trans. Roz... This is uh, yeah. <laughs> this, this is the one that Roz was um, talking about on on TF about. Um, anyway, but I'm, I'm not going to stop TF referencing. Yep. Basically, this one is talking now about plasma question plasma, mark. Plasma oh, technology for power. Yeah. Um, they also seem to have sort of since Hyperloop One went bankrupt, they're trying to disassociate themselves from Hyperloop technology, even though they're doing the same thing. Um, they're like, "Oh no, this is our own thing." You know, it's like that the the comic where you know the the I made this, and then the other person takes and is like, "I made this," and then that was Elon <laughs> Musk with the uh, vac trains, and then this guy is doing that a second time. <laughs> yeah. And this time just, it's got a just, little bag of plasma attached to it. Though. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, um, uh, it's it's uh, better for than saline solution. So they're 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 grifting. They're just grifting. They're doing. They're managing to have like credulous journalists still publish their nonsense as if no one's ever heard of Hyperloop. So you can go back through and look at Transport news articles from like local Canadian news uh, and kind of regional Canadian news, and it, it's weird. It's written about as if Hyperloop has never existed, as if as if people have never heard of it. Really strange, but uh, you know, part of the problem. That's, right. Let's jump forwards again. In the past. So Let's, let's leave transport forward. to it. Um, so, uh, 2016, Heart Hyperloop. We have to go to the Netherlands. Hi, guys. Um, <laughs> it's, it's Heart Hyperloop. And um, the last real update from Heart, to be fair, was October 2023, because we are entering the Grift Loop. Ah. Forget Hyperloop. It's the Grift loop. Grift loop. Do you know what's a good organization to get loads of cash out of? Well, I see its flag right there. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's the European Commission. It's the EU. Hooray. Hooray. Let's take millions of euros from the EU to do stupid I, shit. I miss that. I miss when that was us. You know, I miss when We you... could do that. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing, right? You, you travel around europe and you see like a sort of like a pig pen in poland that has a big like funded as a project of the (laughs) european union pig shit development agency thing (laughs) on the front and you're like i miss that we have grifts we have perfectly serviceable grifts and we've robbed ourselves of the opportunity of our entire country is based on grifts and flim flams yeah yeah, exactly we're great for this stuff anyway yeah heart hyperloop um they they managed to grift. Um, they they put they stored some pipe in a goods yard, a, a literal good yard yeah, on, the, on, the, on like the, the, the border. Of- <laughs> <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> I think like, like, that was the, a comic uh, effect. Yeah, on the uh, on the uh, yeah, the spray bottles coming out on the um, on the uh, outskirts of Ghent. I think there's like some like just goods yard or some rail goods yard, ironically, because it's always a railway. Um, and there's just some pipe being stored there by this company. They haven't actually assembled it in any way, and they've been given twelve million euros of cash for that. God I mean, bless. the thing is, to the EU, this is less than nothing. Right, you <laughs> can true, you yeah. can write to the EU with like a letterhead you made yourself and be like, "Can I have fifteen million euros?" And they're like. Yes. And as we'll see as we go through these companies, uh, correct. That's exactly what you can do. Um, So this company, so, okay, they've got their millions of of euros, but in an indication of their health, they're merging with uh, another company, which is Zelleros, or Thelleros, um, because we are going to Spain. Um, This is a a Spanish company that appears to have hijacked the Extinction Rebellion logo for confusing reasons. Oh, shit, that's what it has. Um, uh, founded in 2016, based in Spain. The last real update from these these guys, uh, December 2022. So again, kind of some. When I'm saying a real update, by the way, I mean that something that it's not a grifty renderite announcement. It's like some actual thing has happened um, on their website. Um, current status of Theros is that they have one mock-up, they have uh, one small pipe, 
uh, uh, same uh, at all for a cool <laughs> 15 million euros of EU cash. This um, is my 15 million euro pipe. Just got just got 15 million euros of cash for a for a, just for a pipe in it. Uh, quite spectacular. I put pictures in for this because it, yeah. it shows. I, I want to show some things. So, uh, two pictures here. On the left, you have what looks like, to be fair, quite a snazzy looking um, sort of studio yeah, type this is the kind workshop. Of, this thing. is the kind of thing yeah. that 15 million euros off the EU buys you. Is a little exactly. Like... And what it buys you is buying all the stuff off the last incarnation of Jordan F1 team. No because... shit, really. I mean, not literally, but oh, they've basically oh. what they've done is literally taken this stuff. They've bought a load of stuff, probably off like auction from the last low tier F one team that failed. Because all of this stuff is just stuff they've bought and arranged in a room. <laughs> We're None of it makes Gunter any sense. Steiner yeah, in yeah, a you, tube you, and accelerate him that's... to relativistic speed. <laughs> <laughs> the they only have thing like that's a actually drill doing anything here is the laptop charger plugged in. That's the only thing that's actually <laughs> doing anything. And so, and you might think, oh, but wait, there's like a jet engine ass looking thing in the middle. That's surely something. They're doing something with that. It looks very nice. No, all that is is a plywood mock up with a screen in it with some seats inside Jesus that looks Christ. like what a pod might. Oh. No technology. It's just quite, a plywood mock up. Small as well, so it's a scale. Yes. Model? I think it's like to ha- Yeah, it's like half size type mm. situation. But even, even though it's half size, you can see in the ne- the picture next to it that it's only got like six seats in it. Even though it's a shrunk <laughs> mock up, spectacular. Anyway, they so got that's a what weird, fancy get. room. Yeah, it's a very fancy room. I mean, it's a fancy room, or it's um, a manure uh, uh, silo. Actually, because I'm pretty sure manure silos are built in the same way with the the king posts and the and the oh. sort of concrete slats. I think anyway. actually, based well, on this gradient back here, the whole thing's a green screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. pipe loop isn't yeah. real. Not only is it yeah. not real, it's not real on a sort of second order of abstraction. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, next, uh, next, because here's what they've actually got. Oh, when I talked about their small pipe. Uh, oh wow, that's, that's that's what it is. I was expecting like at least a big wide pipe, but for like a really short, so like a you know girthy pipe instead. That- it doesn't even have any sort of thing to fit a vacuum pump onto. It's literally just like a weird small model mock up type thing. That's wild. Just what? Just, what what's what is, what's going on here? Proof of concept. Man can create pipe. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So um, let's let's jump. Let's let's leave Theleros behind because you know they're, they're, I do, they're, I do they're like the, shit, the kind of honest. like vibe of this very small kind of like uh, you know Spanish industrial estate because it's like this is exactly the way that you get money out of the EU is you are in an EU country you are in an underdeveloped region economically of that <laughs> yeah. EU country and you go do you want to invest in you know, northern Poland, fucking, uh, you know, uh, southern Spain, southern Italy, whatever. And the EU is like, yeah, love that, love to. What are you doing? You're like, building a pipe. It looks like it looks like the you guys Top ever heard Gear of techno- Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> it looks like the Top Gear Technology Center. Literally, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, quite something. So next, we're going to talk about Novomo, um, who used to be called Hyperloop Poland. Oh. We talk oh, about Poland. This okay. one's great. Correct. This one's fantastic. This is so good. So I, I see right. some more EU stuff on here. I see oh, some. Oh, you like, better believe it. Industry awards. Yeah, I put in some industry awards because it's like you know the grift is real. Uh, the big the big circle jerk of like money. You know, just people who think they're great patting each other on the back. You know, B two B magazines getting all happy with each other, right? So, founded in twenty seventeen, based in Poland, formerly Hyperloop Poland. Um, the last real update, quite recently, September twenty twenty three, because these guys have done the clever thing. They're a bit like Ros was saying about um, Transpod. Um, they've given up on Hyperloop, and they've given up on well, ish, given up on Hyperloop, but they are riding on its coattails to kind of. Uh, why am I reading the slide? I'm doing the worst presenter thing anyway. Sorry, everyone. I've I've got into bad habits. Right, these guys, basically, they're pushing something that's even funnier and more stupid. So, next slide, please. I just want to point out here the best oh, yeah, Polish on. hardware startup to watch in 2023. Yeah, they beat out those the guys, guys who invented the screen door. Mm-hmm. No, Sorry, no, they, they, beat the guys, they beat the guys who roughly, like, half the amount of labor required to screw in a light bulb. <laughs> 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 so um, this is off their website. Yeah, they're trying to like basically again. They're they're trying to they're trying to make they're trying to basically get investment for an idea that's ultimately as stupid as Hyperloop, arguably even more stupid. Um, uh, once again, they're like, look, you take this train that has comfort capacity, and what you do is you turn it into this small coffin sized ass thing that looks like the Glasgow subway. What? It's an easy translation, right? Um, and then also, so what it's saying is, but what you could do is 
to carry Hyperloop pods on the existing railway. Ooh, Ooh I'm pretty sure this was in train. This. what? This was Correct. in this was in Railroad Tycoon Two. <sighs> The this mag is, this, this that is worked on existing rail. Some of the stupidest shit I'm ever. I'm so bad. <laughs> um, so let's have a look at the next picture, which is of their from their like video or their website kind of pitching what this thing is. So what they're saying is you build a load of additional uh, kind of moderate infrastructure on the existing track. So you add a load of extra bits and pieces, including this big, long uh, maglev strip that goes down the middle of the track, which, um, by the way, will not work. For starters, where does any of your signaling system go? Because lots of that relies on Belize's uh, in the forefoot. But anyway, I so that's need the plan. Use, use, use phones or something. Hand signals, Use baby. phones or something. Use an yeah, app. Exactly. <laughs> use an app for it. Um, so they've done this little test track where they've carried... Well, this thing, this like bomb disposal robot ass looking thing here. Um, <laughs> it's just, yeah, quite rubbish. So what is the action? So let's go to the render. Everyone, you've all been waiting for the render. Let's get the render up. Let's yep. get the transport yep. fever loading screen ass oh, render up. Okay. Yep. Here is um, a transport wow. fever ass loading screen, I... but with, hmm. yeah, yeah with, a, with, a, <laughs> with what looks like a shiny tampon riding on uh, the near track. This is funny for a variety of reasons. Firstly, why do we think that we have to limit speeds of trains in the first place? Uh, well, in case we well, go too fast, the tracks and, like, are curvy. Women's, women's uteruses wokeness, will fall yes. out. Women's yeah. uteruses, Excuse me, women's, exactly. People's uteruses people's, will fall that's out. That's wokeness right there. Yeah, that's yeah, wokeness. Yeah, that's, I can't even, yeah, that's say, yeah, that's I can't even remember too late using that you don't have a uterus. Language? Yeah. Using uh, inclusive language, appalling. If we, if we didn't have DEI, we could run every train at 400 miles an hour. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no. The, the, oh, so, so this thing, the it's like, once again, it's like the people designing this thing don't understand the actual... The, the reason trains have to go slower is either because there's a train in front and just, it has just, to go slow so it doesn't uh, catch right, up. I, right, I've solved this. I've solved this. Okay. Back of every train, right, there's a red light. Instead of that, you put a sick ramp you just perfectly <laughs> jump it. Easy. There was a system developed for that in the 1800s. Oh my god. That was like, seriously I considered. A, I can't say a <laughs> fucking thing about a train without you what? going, by the way, in Lithuania in the fucking 1790s, <laughs> one guy filed a patent. I'm the only person who knows about it. <laughs> So, two reasons. Number one, because other trains are around. Number two, because of curvature. You can't, like, the, the, having fancy new technology is not going to change the fact that you have curvature on a railway that limits speed because of the comfort of the, of the human meat bags inside it, right? So, this thing, what's it going to do? Okay, on the various sections of short straight between curves that exist, and some of them maybe, you know, you, you maybe get a mile of straight, five miles of straight in, the, in an extreme situation, but you get a length of straight and it accelerates up to a bit faster than a normal train would, then it has to slow down again to regular speed to go around a curve. The trouble is, even in doing so, it's then caught up with the regular train in front, so it has to slow down anyway. So, what? And, and, and to achieve this nothing, you've invested in a huge amount of additional complex and, and intrusive infrastructure on the existing railway. It makes absolutely no sense and it's fucking hilarious so uh next slide it has please. no capacity either one thing i want to oh, point yeah. out is oh, yeah, this has been tried before oh yes yeah <laughs> here's the, the the german rail zeppelin what if we put a big propeller on the back of a passenger car all right yeah it worked it also had the potential to turn people on the platform into a fine paste um <laughs> you know Don't worry this is gonna happen to me when i stand on any platform so yeah and and so you know that the, the, it could go very fast but then it had to slow down around corners since it was a propeller of course it didn't accelerate very fast and then you know we weren't satisfied with this so we did try it again in the united states oh yes. um the oh, m497 yeah. black mm -hmm. beetle which is a bud rdc with a jet engine on top from a b36 uh, this oh, is the yeah. same concept fundamentally yep, it's the same when it concept. comes right down to it, except that this is actually has some amount of crash worthiness. Um, <laughs> yeah. Whereas yeah. The, 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 the giant tampon is, it is, does appear to just be made out of carbon fiber, which I look forward to the shards yeah. of carbon fiber, uh, separating all my various internal organs from each other, yeah. um, with pinpoint accuracy. It's nothing, truly nothing new under the sun. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So talking of which, uh, Swiss pod, 
Um, the Swiss Pod's fun because it, it it does precisely what Roz just intimated. So let let's talk about Swiss Pod. Founded pretty recently, actually. They were they were really late to the party, just like the Swiss often are. Very late to the party, uh, out of date with what's going on in the world. Um, sitting yeah, on a pile of like Nazi gold, gold. In the bank account. Fucking yeah. shit. Uh, Excuse me. <laughs> women, women's suffrage. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, hello to the Swiss. You have lovely trains. Uh, actually, I have a lot of time for the Swiss people. That's because um, they don't so, have DAI. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They. 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 So uh, the the non DEI uh, Swiss. Um, the last real update from this thing, sadly though, is very short lived because the last real update was in July 2021, um, and they built a site, uh, a nice circle in in the kind of the, the yard of their of oh, their kind like, of, uh, you, campus Sw- building. Switzerland loves building like large circles under things. They do. So, they do yeah. under, over, next to big hmm. circle, or in this case, a small circle made out of drainage pipe, uh, and they got three and a half million euros uh, of EU cash uh, in the process to. Do so. How the fuck and do they do nice, that when Switzerland's pictures? not in the EU? Is my question. Yeah. Well, indeed, but this is because the Euro- the, the Swiss um, uh, Regional Development uh, Fund can tap into European Commission money oh. for projects that can feed into the EU. So, Why you know, the fuck can't we do that? Sorry, not well, to get too well, We're trying with Horizon, aren't we? You know, yeah, we're trying. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's some nice happy pictures. Uh, there you can see it's just a little circle. I mean, it's quite a big circle. I mean, it looks like fun, but it's fun in the way that you could probably get a hamster to run around in it and not much more. <laughs> I don't know. The trouble with it being an infinite loop is I don't know how you Europe, put things in it. Please let us waste your money. Oh, uh, well... You just have to disassemble it, take one of the segments yeah. out, and then, then so, you have the perpetual hyperloop. You're just on it. Yeah, exactly. Like well, anyway, it's so weird, but they all look very happy doing a little yay in the middle of their nice circles. That's good. I'm glad they got 3.5 million euros of EU cash for that. What's funnier about SwissPod is that they call themselves the natural inheritors of. Next slide, please. The Swiss, Swiss Metro. Metro. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, oh I which remember is, this. We've oh, talked God. about this before. Yeah. Swiss Metro is what. Elon Musk directly. Uh, uh, this is what H Bomber guy should be doing the video about Elon Musk on. Is that, that Elon Musk very directly stole the Swiss Metro concept, and you can see that a lot of the renderite people also stole the Swiss Metro concept when they created their renders. Because this picture created by, uh, like, let's face it, two really old retired guys, yeah. um, like using like what was it using Bryce three D. Um, there, there's a deep cut for any of the um, the three. Well, yeah, this is uh, this is a nerds. this is a very old company. This has direct continuity with um, the Rand Corporation version of the idea. Oh, um, yeah. you know, it's it's uh, th- this this is the actual inheritor of the the VAC train heritage. Yes. Um, <laughs> You and notice it, came, it is it an actual cut. train as opposed to yes, a pod. You can see that there are multiple vehicles in there, which is uh, partly the reason why it couldn't work because of the the long German name principles um so uh they, they are swiss metro so the swiss pods say they're the inheritors of swiss metro even though they're not because swiss metro dash ng still exist and still say they're going to create their own hyperloop but we're going to ignore it. so they're swiss metro shout out to their comedy late 90s website <laughs> i love i love it a logo that uses clip art it just mm. makes me so happy oh, uh, yeah. next slide please yeah. Right. Okay. So that's sorry. That, that this concludes our our first group um, of uh, hyperloop people. These are the big hitters, as it were. They're the big players. Now we get into the weeds of the Ooh, real Bush fun. League. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, let's start by talking about China. Um, China. China. Yeah. Um. CASIC or the oh god, I have to try and remember what the acronym stands for. The Chinese Aeronautical and signed uh it's like an aeronautical company from china um uh, founded in this company founded in 1999 they were not doing hyperloop stuff in 1999 basically china my Aerospace belief space science and industry corporation thank you mm. thanks alice yeah, that, that's a lot of stuff they're, they're china's <laughs> largest maker of missiles good for oh. them hooray well and that's why they've done it so basically that that's kind of the reason the reason this they've done a hyperloop thing which is they've only done one hyperloop thing and if you go to the next picture they've created a test track and a pod my belief is that this is basically just to, so that China can say they have a market presence in Hyperloop just in case it does become big. I don't think they've actually oh, done anything. Yeah, so you just have like a state directed thing of like taking your equivalent of Lockheed Martin and being like, do some bullshit and call it the Hyperloop. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. That's, like how... that's what I believe this is because this test track is it looks like it's basically just like um, tent material stretched over just like probably a normal maglev test track that they probably have somewhere kicking around. Um, yeah, because they, like they got like that. They got like that that maglev they put on display a while back, and I don't think it has a test track for it. They just say they yeah. have it. 
yeah, and, and they are doing they are doing some stuff with they're they're talking about doing some stuff with high speed test tracks for maglev as well. But I, again, I think it's a little bit of a like we look like we're doing this. But bear in mind, China had the battle of maglev versus conventional rail, and conventional rail absolutely won. Hence, pretty, pretty they built tens of thousands one, yeah. of kilometers of it in like a decade. Um, so uh, that's China. Let's 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 move on from China, and we're going to go to Germany. We are going to Germany. Oh no! Um, Get me off the ride. Yeah. <laughs> this is just no this one has tums in it, it you won't it's, get it's into the jazz the hyperloop yeah, yeah. It's, it, hyperloop, the, yeah. the thing that um, i my stomach experiences when i eat a jollibee hot chicken sandwich oh tummy hurt yeah um uh, so, so this is one of the mm. what, wait 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 is it is it tum because it's technisches universität munchen Jawohl. Ah, for fuck's um, sake. Okay, of course it is. So uh, this is like lots of the Hyperloop, kind of these sort of pseudo companies, is that they come out of um, uh, venture capital wanting to exploit the cheap labor of um, PhD students um, at, to create a load of IP and patents that they can then license. That's kind of the other background. So mainly Hyperloop is to stop California High Speed Rail happening, but also it's a secondary grift of venture capital trying to create IP off cheap labor, i.e. Uh, gullible students. Yeah, two, two um, have done a few things like this. I've seen some of the like weird walking machines along oh, the same God. lines of like, yeah, the, we got like a lab to do this, and it's some good press for us, I guess. Back, exactly. back when I was at Drexel, I was on a Formula SAE team, and you know when sure Hyperloop works. came around, they started the uh, the Drexel Hyperloop team. Yep. And uh, what they did is, after they moved the Formula SAE team into a new building, then they gave half the lab space <laughs> over to Hyperloop. Um, uh, who proceeded to do nothing. University was deeply involved in the crimes of the Nazi regime. Drexel, uh, fucking probably, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that school, man. I know. Ugh. It's fun to go so, to. It's fun to go to civil engineering school while the civil engineering near, civil engineering school is being, being dismantled. Imploded, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the current status of these guys, uh, they have a mock-up and they got some very gullible um, uh, regional pro ministers and prime minister to uh, come and stand with a shovel in a car park next to some dirt that appears to have just been laid there. Cool. I'm, it's kind I'm of strange. They to... just like laid yeah. some dirt out for them to stand next to, next to a render, uh, and they haven't actually built anything. The render, the render, render is a pod on a scissor lift and a tube. Not You can barely even call that a tube. That's just... I mean, it doesn't go anywhere. It's, it's a segment. It's a short segment of pipe. Is that Marcus Serda in the middle there? I think it is. Jesus Christ! Oh, it quite could. It quite the, possibly the, could be the, the sort of paramount leader, the um, the Kim Jong Il of Bavaria. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think it's yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all the other thing is like it's all these happy, gullible people who are involved in the process, sitting and standing in the background, like lots of young, bright things. This is another thing that aggravates me: is that you get all these bright young things, like these these kind of. Uh, corporate but well-meaning students uh, across the world, including in my, my former university in Edinburgh, um, getting involved in Hyperloop stuff and thinking it's the future and, and not putting their you know, bright, happy, enthusiastic minds into rail stuff. You know, this is a lot of human capital that's being wasted here. There are lots of reasons that Hyperloop makes me yeah. very angry. Yeah, it sounds, the variance, like, it sounds yeah. like they're like getting addicted to heroin. <laughs> Hyperloop, not even once. I mean, yeah. Bavarians, Bavarians can get very mad at me for everything that I've said wrong and mispronounced, but the one thing I do know about Marcus Serda, if that is in fact him, is that he has um, he did try to have a Bavarian space program as an announcement, so just build a, tra build a fucking train, man. Oh, we're going to have, have the railroads first, in Germany. The first beer on the International Space Station. Um... <laughs> 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 I think of Bavarians. I've been listening to um because I have a bizarre obsession with uh, Werner Herzog. I've been listening to him read out his own uh, sort of memoirs, which is which is great. It means I have Werner Herzog in Whoa, my head. You must look really into the eyes Werner of the Herzog. Chicken. Yeah, he's uh, he's a remarkable man. I'm just imagining like what what Werner Herzog say about the Hyperloop because he has thoughts on everything. He has thoughts on like the most niche television, you trashy yeah. television. He's watched it somehow and will have extensive <laughs> no. thoughts on it. But yeah, this is this um, is part of the like uh, the CSU because the CSU is like separate from the CDU. I, I might have those the wrong way around. But so he has this little Bavarian fiefdom, um, and one of his ways of like sort of propping it up. Um, rather than, you know, to try and stop voters drifting to the AFD or whatever, is uh, a huge amount of investment in aerospace, uh, thus the space program, and thus also oh this. And a lot of that is being, like, 
funneled through the Technical University of Munich. So this is all this is deep Bavarian conspiracy shit yeah. that's happening here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and on top of that, I'm just thinking about how you pronounce Hyperloop if you're a German and I keep coming back I to like, like he Hyperloop. This man yeah, is personally investing half of the GDP of Bavaria into keeping all the exhibits at the Deutsche Museum running all the time. The only museum I've ever been in where all the interactive exhibits worked. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That and that and the weird the, that and the pump they must use to make the weird um the, the weird wave in the English garden where everyone does surfing. Um, anyway, that's a oh, that's a good one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. Uh, let's move on quickly because uh, there's nothing quick about me going through these slides, even though I hope there would be. Founded 2016. We're talking about Delft Hyperloop here again. It's a university situation. Um, oh, higher education. The Netherlands. Hi everyone. Um, actually, the Netherlands. I used to listen to a Netherlands drum and bass radio that was so good. Um, and their drum bass was excellent. And it was really funny because as with so many um, European uh, radio stations, they'd be like in Dutch, they'd be like, hey, do you do you do you do fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I used to love that shit. It was so good. Anyway, right, moving on. Yeah. Um, uh, so honestly, I actually have nothing bad to say about Delft Hyperloop other than the Hyperloop shit. Because honestly, it's just a bunch of students just like tinkering and, and vibing and presumably taking extensive kind of recreational drugs. Um, and I, you know, who's to, who's to say whether that's bad or it's not? It's good to rip off universities. As someone who mm. did that extensively to Temple University, I mean, let's let's keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ross, you found a graphic of Arivo. Okay, Arivo I'm very was right. so funny. It was right. such Arivo, a funny I don't concept. know much about Arivo this because feels they... like a thing from Doom Eternal. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they Arivo were founded in 2016. They're based in the USA. I don't think there was ever an update ever. It's a bit like a transport situation. They never done anything real. They were liquidated two years later. <laughs> but Ross has they, found they, they, information they about them. One video, and I got a still from it here. The idea is they take a highway lane. And they make these ultra fast sleds that go on them, oh and then you God. drive your car onto the sleds, and then it goes really fast. And Wait, then was I this before loop. or after? Exactly, was this before or after Musk did Boring Company? I'm not sure. The funny thing, I would thing laugh so much if Musk it. stole his idea for the stupid, you know, his his idea that lasted what like 18 months or something of the stupid little skids, little tea trays with the cars on it. Because that disappeared. If I, he copied this, that's so funny. I think this was slightly afterwards, but the funniest uh, thing is they do all this renders and it's like, okay, here's the ramp where you go on the Arivo. And it's like on one side, the cars drive off the pod and it disappears into the ground. And then it comes <laughs> back up the other side, flipped around somehow. And then you drive <laughs> your car and it's so fucking, it was, and it accelerated so quickly. It was just, it was hilarious. It was, it was like, I love how, the how shit. did the anyone sort of thing that would like accelerate so quickly that the brakes on the vehicle would fail and it would just leave a row of vehicles behind to get, it, 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 it would get <laughs> grabbed get up by the vehicle front and it would get pancaked into the ceiling of this thing by the one behind. I love that. Yeah. So, I love that. That's such a good fit. I'm a, I'm a little bit that. confused as to why it's enclosed at all. You know, are they going to try and like, okay, I hope your air conditioner set to recirculate. We're going to, we're going to evacuate this too. It assumes, it assumes a perfectly vacuum sealed vehicle. Can you imagine it with Teslas with their panel? <laughs> Just a bunch of people getting sucked through their air conditioning. Your cyber, your cyber truck, you know. Yeah, you get, you get, you get, you get bloated out to huge dimensions oh, from the rapid suck. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you mean cyber suck. I love that. All right. You got, you got it. Hope your journey is less than three minutes, or uh, <laughs> you may lose some IQ points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just stunning. I love this. I need to get this render. I need to find it. I, I love remember, this so much. Remember to exhale as it depressurizes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Always gives me nightmares. Oh, good grief. Right. Okay. Let's go to um, uh, question mark logo. Yeah. Uh, or DGW Hyperloop, um, founded in 2015, based in India, because India had to get involved in the grift. Um, mm -hmm. Last real update, never. And its current status is that it's a website. Cool. As with a lot of these, it's a website. That, that, that's all it is. Um, and if we jump to the next one, which is. Oh. Beautiful. Oh, Hyperloop. Look at the like, oh, yeah. 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 Fantastic. 
So hey, yo, right. hyper loop Italia. Hyper loop Italia. So uh, we make sorry, it a pizza. We make it a pizza in the vacuum. <laughs> so um, I I have I have to talk about um the the in fact let's firstly hyper loop Italia right founded in 2020 at when a guy who we've already mentioned called Bebop Gresta um probably did some <laughs> uh, legally what I'm about to say is humorous conjecture white uh, and some animes. sort of uh, shenanigans with his staff um. Uh, probably i don't know he loved he was he was he's an annoying prick so the quite un, non-nefarious reasons could have been why he split off uh this thing doesn't exist it's not it's not again it's just a website but we have to talk about the guy bebop grester next slide please um he looks kind of kind of like a, is this actually him yes this is actually oh my him God. i thought this was like, stock it's like image for like italian dipshit nope it's this like is if bebop you, took, grester. you took richard hammond and stretched him yeah. <laughs> oh, I was thinking just if I was thinking if you rocket fired a kilo of cocaine into Ed Norton. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, Bebop Gresta. I, I've met this guy in person. Mm. Uh, he's a prick. Oh. Uh, he wore a very large scarf. Not that I necessarily hold that against people. Yeah. Um, so, uh, brief story. I once went to. Um, I once drove to Milton Keynes because I couldn't get down on a train in time. I drove to Milton Keynes, and on my way to Milton Keynes, by the way, for a Hyperloop conference that I intended to ask. Uh, I was the only person asking searching questions there, so I'm glad I went. On the way to this event, um, I was sideswiped by an HGV on a roundabout. The story oh, sounds this... like something I made up. Roz, you made this up in a TF episode as a joke thing about a stupid place and a daft thing happening and uh, on an I episode about Hyperloop. And I was like, Roz, I haven't told you about this story. Why are you re regaling did, a precise thing that happened to me? It was horrible. Thankfully, I was the in the smart car. mind meld when yes. we were when we oh, were no. going down the stairs at Two Liberty Place. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> we did spend a lot of time with each other uh, running down the stairs of a literal skyscraper. Um, uh, it's fine. We'd had a lot of alcohol and everything was good. Um, so uh, yeah, this guy. So hyper. So uh, thankfully, I was in the smart car and I literally bounced to safety as this HGV hit me and it just knocked the wing mirror off of the poor smart. So fuck you, HGV driver. Mm. Uh, I love that car. Um, anyway, uh, thankfully, it survived to live uh, until we got rid of it and got a panda instead. That's a different story, though. Bebop Gresta. So here he is. Let's go to the next slide. Because we have oh, to talk boy. about the Hyperloop guys. This is just me doing a Google search of Bebop Gresta. And this is why Hyperloop exists. This is another reason why Hyperloop exists, which is to make this kind of guy mm. have a book and be able to talk at the World Economic Forum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Um, I, I I hate this guy, and he was so I asked him several searching questions to which he had no responses, obviously because there's nothing in his head. Um, the thing uh, is, my Gareth, searching you're questions like were the, the, aff the most affable guest that we regularly have, like all around lovely man, and yet you are legit beefing with this guy, which is such an indictment <laughs> of him. I'm, I'm interested uh, in the Hyperloop book because, like, what is it? What does it say? It's like page one. It didn't work. <laughs> What, yeah, what I, I don't learned know what, about you know GoFundMe scams. I learned honestly. I don't know how you could write. I'm 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 currently writing a book spoiler alert um, about a legitimate thing, and it's very hard to write multiple tens of thousands of words. Mm. Um, writing a book about a thing that literally doesn't exist, uh, genuinely impressive. Except that he probably got someone to ghost write his book about made up stuff. So wonderful. Um, anyway, so I just the, the Google search of him just shows all these. Pr What's funny is do you know the picture in the previous slide. That's the picture on his website. Oh no! He yeah. actively has decided to put that picture on his. Oh my god! Anyway, he's, he's got he's got bebop.com. Oh, bebop .com. I want bebop.com. Oh, he's got a yeah, second. Yeah, to be fair, yeah, it's the okay. Patreon, so we can get bebop.com. Uh. Anyway, I figured the pictures, the Google search of his picture, isn't just because I have personal beef with him, but it's because I think it sums up how much of a uh, flim flam Hyperloop is quite mm. nicely. This sort of modern day Lyle Landley. Are we done with this guy? Uh, we're done with him. Let's get rid of him. Let's take him off our screens. All right, see you, space cowboy. <laughs> 2015 we're talking about gen uh, logoless genesis hyperloop right. 2015 founded in the usa no real updates ever it didn't have a website and it's gone now oh uh, i like you this watch, company there's a like, lot there's like a, a like a, a boutique there's like a an actual hyperloop working in someone's backyard the guy <laughs> just he, they only have a phone number it's like a low bar on, on uh, yeah. where they only have facebook pages 
Yeah. <laughs> it works like sort of software development where some guy has built a functional Hyperloop system just for his own amusement. It works, and he's the only one who knows about it or uses it, and it's called like Ron's Hyperloop, and Hyperloop is misspelled. <laughs> and this one actually works somehow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. The guy runs uh, a so towing okay, company on the side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he runs some of the last stretch limos in the in the US. Right, um, uh, next company, please. Uh, oh, this one might be familiar These to people. These motherfuckers. These motherfuckers These pricks. Who, pricks. who got bored, did too much ketamine, allegedly, and then bought a bunch of airsoft gun shells. Uh, and like It's like a star CS something airsoft gun body. Put a little f- tiny bullshit flamethrower in it and sold those to the most soy-faced people imaginable. Incredible. So what's funny about this is that it was a boring company was founded in 2017, based in the USA, and in relation to its Hyperloop activities, its last real update was somehow in August 2013, because the boring company is, is one of Musk's weird things that he created. Um, or I, I don't know. I don't actually know what the origin of the boring company is. Is it actually a spin-off from SpaceX and Tesla, or is this something else he just it was, faked? It and, was and a nicked? spin-off from SpaceX, because he thought, yeah. maybe I can dig a tunnel under the property so I can get to work slightly more quickly. That's the one, um, yeah. yeah. So not a single thing this company has done uh, uh, at all. Uh, is, is basically, they've done nothing. The boring company's done nothing in terms of Hyperloop, of course. Uh, we're ignoring the flamethrowers, and we're also ignoring the buried queue of Teslas I don't in believe, Las Vegas. I don't believe they've done anything substantial with increasing the speed of tunnel boring, which is supposed to be their big well, white whale. That was their big thing, yeah. yeah. exactly. And uh, keep in mind, it's not a flamethrower if it doesn't throw the flame, which requires napalm. Um, oh, yeah. so it's just a flame. It's just a, it's just a, a Bunsen burner on a stick. Oh, okay, it's a sideways <laughs> Bunsen burner. Yeah, yeah. okay, understood. Um, yeah, and and I think oh, actually, you've usefully um, nicked my next slide as well, which is good because um, the background, to the, the the person who's done a lot of good digging on the background to this and really dug into the specifics of not just like us being conspiratorial and saying ha ha ha, Elon Musk did this to undermine California high speed rail, but no, Paris Marx, they've Paris written Marks, yeah. a superb, um, you know, just you know all around fantastic uh, person to follow and, and 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 keep up with in terms of tech stuff but uh, paris has written a really good blog digging into the detail of exactly what musk was thinking when coming up with the stupid idea and why it was so uh, send send everyone over to to, to disconnect and paris marx's blog yeah. they've, they've written a really good piece blog, on the podcast we should have him on the show sometime mm, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're um. Actually, likewise, Rail Narrow should have had Paris on. Sorry, Paris, we'll okay. we'll pest you at some point. Yeah, exactly. Um, and th- your listeners, you'll be thankful that I'm now going to shut up. Okay, this is back to my own original part of the podcast, uh, rather than well, cribbing from well, there's Garrett. There's your rail problem, NASA. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just <calm> yeah. together. <laughs> uh, we do have to ask. Okay, we we've discussed the Hyperloop is a grift. All the companies are failing. It's really funny. Is there something that is a contrast to this where people are actually developing new technology in like a methodical, practical, serious way? Well, Um, you can make it look way more like a shoe, apparently. Yes. (laughs) So I I think the the contrast here would be the true ocean constant in Japan, right? Which it's I know I know Gareth has some criticisms of this thing, um, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but this is this is a superconducting maglev train that can go 300 and whatever miles an hour. Um, they've done literally 50 years of research and development to make this thing work. Extensive testing on full scale test tracks. It's finally partially under construction, except for a weird bit in the middle where there's some NIMBY issues. Um, you know, it, 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 this is sort of an extremely expensive, extremely risky project that requires actual massive investment in horizontal construction. This is not the guys in the shed sort of situation that Hyperloop companies are or aspire to be. You know, if you're actually like, OK, we're going to build something that surpasses conventional rail, you're going to put some time into it and you're going to put a lot of money into it. And even this thing has problems yeah <laughs> so i mean yeah the good thing about this is, roger you're absolutely right this is kind of what 
this in, it, pra- like practically Hyperloop might look like if it was a real thing, if it didn't have all the problems we talked about, because it has all the challenges of its linear infrastructure, its horizontal infrastructure, exactly. And even in this picture, you can see it's on stilts, which means it's had heavy infrastructure work done. Yep. This is a massive civil engineering project. The length of tunnels is spectacular. It's already billions and billions of US dollars over budget. It's a decade plus delayed. Uh, it's likely that it's not going to open until the, the, it's supposed to be opening uh, soon, but it's like, I'd be surprised if it is running before the, you know, before the 2030s, the mid 2030s, um, it's slipping back. But the reason, even if, you know, even if you park all that, it's a big complex infrastructure project. The reason that Japan is progressing with this isn't because they're sick of conventional high-speed rail in any way. It's that they've built out their high-speed rail system. Like it, they, they've built it out. They've built as much as they kind of can. And so the next thing has to kind of really be a bypass for the high-speed rail. And so that's why they've put a punt on maglev. That's that's kind. Of, there, there's some early discussions about this kind of. There's some logic behind this being more earthquake proof than high speed rail as well. But the reality is, I, I don't think that stands up so much because the existing high speed rail has shown itself to be pretty bomb proof from an earthquake perspective. This is just about providing a bypass for the bypass, and um, it goes through mostly just underground. It's it's, it's yeah. one huge, very very expensive tunnel. Yeah, and it's you know the trains are really big. They're really really fast. Um, you know this is. Uh, it's very, very expensive to build, um, and I, it's also four times more energy consuming than conventional high speed rail wow. per passenger seat. And you got to have like liquid nitrogen cooling on the train what? because it's yeah. superconducting maglev. It's, it's I mean, a cool this, kind of little like prestige yeah. flex, though, to it do. Is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah and I mean, genuinely, given the capacity on the existing high speed rail lines, is a massive and b maxed out you do need something like this yeah um, and the kind of question was do we build another conventional uh, just, just, do the, just do the tgv thing and put another deck on all of the shinkansen yeah. <laughs> yeah. well no. the trouble is this is well, the thing is they can't because all the tunnels were built super early in the history of high-speed rail which is why the trains how all the japanese high-speed trains have such stupid looking noses ah. i might have said this in a previous episode if i have hogs shout at me i'm so sorry that was sort of part of the design philosophy is we have smaller windows and it's able to handle the differential pressure more easily they do have yep. some double decker shinkansens but they're phasing them out i think just because oh. they got to put yeah. elevators on them which is you know annoying and also, they run on a low dwell time system as well. Like they run on a system that's almost like metro timetables, but for yeah. high speed rails. So they don't really have time to load up double decker trains. It's like hurling um, myself into the train and yeah. then just sort of dealing. Oh, yeah. they're beautiful, though. Yeah. I mean, absolutely stunning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all of the Japanese trains, okay, apart from a couple of duck, ducky duds, the majority of the Japanese high speed fleet is stunning. It's interesting that this thing isn't as high capacity. The trains are not nearly as high capacity as the um, mainline you know, conventional rail equivalents. They, they don't carry as many people. There's a lot more kit on the train than a conventional high speed rail train as well. So there are definitely shortcomings. This is a technology that is, is has shortcomings compared to conventional high speed rail. Um, but yeah, as Ross yeah. says, like it was kind of like, well, we're we're kind of playing around on top of an existing, fully saturated, very effective high speed rail system. So what the hell? And there's a couple areas where they may have shot themselves in the foot. Like, um, you know, this thing is uh, because it's superconducting magnets. There's all these intense magnetic fields around it, which means it needs these weird shielded boarding corridors. And like, also, they the may be implementing like credit cards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there may be like some anymore. kind of extra security about boarding it because everyone loves to have security on trains these days sort of negates Ugh. the whole you know the 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 advantage over airports show me the um, shinkansen so, swat team hold on i'm going to yeah. google this really quickly <laughs> google it or put it into bing ai or whatever yeah it may not even be that much faster than the uh nozami shinkansen to go from tokyo to nagoya it probably won't be really worth it until it gets to uh osaka um yep. you know and that's going to be long time from now but yeah we're talking the 24s at the earliest like the late 24s so i've looked this up i've looked this up and i'm gonna save this image for devon so they can phase <laughs> it in uh, i'm gonna put a link you, to in the in the zencaster chat here so j uh, jr east did uh, a like terrorist attack drill i guess and this is their police unit it is four guys oh all of whom are in just regular like cop uniforms and one of them has my favorite piece in, piece of police equipment in the world, the grabby pole, where have a gra- <laughs> I thought so, so initially I thought that was like a a, a comedy cartoon f- fishing net. 
Yeah, no, it should it's, also it's be just, quite funny. This is literally I, I, there's quite a dark history to it because they were, I believe, invented Ooh. in China in order to uh, like restrain and put out people who are setting themselves on fire to protest oh, the, the Chinese government. But yeah, the deal is that you just like if a guy has a knife or something, or he's you know he wants to fight, you just grab him with the pole and pin him against mm -hmm. something, and then just wait <laughs> until he chills out, or you can get him on the floor, like. <laughs> Uh, dark, yeah. but also kind of funny in a dark way. Um, yeah, but this is you know this is this is what it looks like when you're developing this new kind of high capacity rail technology. When this is finished in 20 years, they'll probably have worked even more of the bugs out. We might have a room temperature superconductor by then, and they can get rid of the liquid nitrogen system. Mm. Who knows? You live in hope, um, but you know. yeah, exactly. This is uh, if you're actually trying to build something new. This is the level of development you need. Um, yeah. Now, what has resulted from? Hyperloop being the technology of the future, um, even though it didn't work. Um, I mean, it has given an excuse to kill a lot of high-speed rail projects. Yeah, sure. not, not the main excuse, but one of them. <laughs> mm. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Yes. I remember watching the original Loop video, which uh, continues to be an inspiration to me because it's very, very good. And um, yeah, it's, it's even if it hasn't directly stopped or slowed down projects, it's create it's 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 contributed. <laughs> Alice is sending us more pictures of trade cars. I, 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 I get into the cop hole. It just happens to me. <laughs> There's nothing yeah, we, we can do. I'll send you this one. You can flash it up as well. <laughs> um, the like it might not have been a singular reason. But it has contributed. Oh, I'm making myself sad. Think about HS2 again. Oh, it's contributed yeah. to this wider feeling of oh well, maybe you know it's it's it added to you know a bunch along, along with like the Green Party of England and Wales and the IEA and TPA and also Rishi Sunak going hi guys, I'm getting a job application for California. Um, <laughs> along with all this well stuff, um, it's much, much like in, your mate Dave. He just wants to work in California. You just know? wants to work. Everybody wants you know? to get out of the out of Britain and like work in California where the sun. Yeah, and then you realize so, yeah, you're in everything... Bakersfield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's just punishment for Rishi Sunak. I think we should, like, install him in Chino, you know? <laughs> are, there, are there a few great places I'd West like to Kavina. install Sunak? Yeah. Um, uh, on some train tracks might be a good start. Um, uh, in Minecraft parody, yeah. uh, redacted, yeah, etc. On those, like, redstone train tracks. Yeah, on, on some yeah, exactly, Minecraft yeah. tracks, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's 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 contributed to this this weird pullback from high speed rail that we've seen. Uh, you know, in the USA, the, the, I, I think it's fair to say Cal uh, California high speed rail has sort of been kind of stalling and, and tripping over its shoelaces, even though big sections of it are still being built. And obviously in the UK, we've just you know just smashed our face into a brick wall and got rid of all the important parts of HS two. Yeah, I mean it's um, not even going to go to Houston now, apparently. Which my God, yeah, Old Oak uh, Common. Yeah, I mean it's funny because they're oh, anyway. That's that, that's another episode, isn't it? That's but yeah. at some point you'll do the HS two episode and you'll find and, and if I'm still alive, um, and, be about, and, and we can we can go there. That one will be about twenty five hours long. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll start recording it in the anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. that that's one we have to do as a live episode, I think, and then that way that'll keep us a yeah. keep us a hard hard and fast. You guys do not go anywhere. Come come to London. We'll do an HS two exactly. episode with yeah. Gareth live. Oh yeah, that'd That's be fun. It. It's a threat. Yeah, we could stress some space projects from the, is on notice, you know. Yeah. Live from the <laughs> yeah. National Railway Museum. Oh, that'd be fun. Oh shit, we could That's, go there. That, I mean, you that mean. would actually be an awesome idea. We should maybe take this one offline. That's a very yeah. good idea. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hogs, you're on notice for that one. Anyway. Broadcasting right, so. from the cab of the mallard. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I prefer oh, Duchess God. of Hamilton, to be honest. It's my little Ooh, heresy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I prefer the Q the, the the Q1 actually because I'm a, a a maniac and I like ugly things. But uh, anyway, yeah. that's another story. Yeah, explains so, why you keep coming on the podcast. You know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is this is a, a a situation where you know it's another one of those miracle technologies that's just around the corner that maybe if we just wait for it to show up, we can not invest all the money. You know, it's up the hyperloop yeah. is up there with like carbon capture and storage mm. and like um uh. Driverless cars, driverless yeah. cars yeah. through yeah. generative oh, artificial yeah. intelligence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, battery freight locomotives, room temperature <laughs> superconductor, room temperature superconductors. Nuclear we got fusion. close a couple of times. Nuclear mm, yeah. fusion. 
that so nuclear wh- fusion one of might these be will, yeah whichever one of these along actually pops right now. off is yeah. we will sound like idiots on but like yeah. all of the rest of them are just like, like let's let's on. uh list all technologies right now and see uh, which ones we canceled uh hammer. screwdriver not real, not real. Uh, woke. Uh, woke. Woke. Yeah. <laughs> there's that machine that cuts plastic in fun shapes Ooh. 3D printing. Laser cutter. Yeah, yeah that's fucking bullshit. Yeah. The laser cutter, it's taking investment away from people with scissors. Yeah, belt sand. Sand. Oh, I love a scissor. Yeah, yeah. Can't be done. Electric <laughs> screwdriver. Uh, the, the, the Makita <laughs> battery powered coffee machine that James yeah. Hoffman did a video on. Oh, man. Uh, yes. Uh, like that guy. Really, really sexy voice. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, we still keep throwing money at this. Uh, here's another one I stole from Gareth. Hooray! Yeah, I totted, totted up the nut. Just from what I could find, I totted up how much money the EU has given Hyperloop shit. Uh, and that's 54 million euros. Yeah, pocket change. You know, it loses that down the back of the sofa. I will uh, say, yeah, yeah that, you know, we, we, we're also still trying to fund it in the United States. Um, according to News 5, ABC News 5 in Cleveland, um, they're still trying to do the Hyperloop Transportation Technologies test track in, uh, like, Cleveland. Okay. Oh my god! I mean, yeah. they're not though, are they? It's just the same journalists repeating the same credulous bullshit. Yeah. Look. Oh wait, this is January thirty first, twenty twenty three. Excuse me, I forgot that the year changed. Uh, uh, also, that it's uh, not incredible. January thirty first yet. Incredible. Oh, it yeah. could have been. Um, it might be when this goes out. Yeah. Um, yeah, just <clears throat> baffling. And this is one of the things that's incumbent on us, right? If we're, and I don't know, we're going to get to the point of what what have we learned here? One of the things that is incumbent on us is if we can particularly for local journalists who are writing about this shit, kind of reach out to them and, and say, do you, want a diff- do you want some more content to put into your content farm? Um, why don't you have a conversation with me and I'll explain why this doesn't work. Um, mm. and, and that's kind of what I did. And it, it has, so I have converted the whole BBC tech team into anti-Hyperloop people through, partly through Rory Kethlan Jones actually being quite a good tech journalist and seeing through this bullshit immediately. And partly through me being very annoying on Twitter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, I got to drop off. All right. No, okay. we did uh, almost. We lost Sorry, Liam. Almost. No worries. Yeah. Talk to you guys later. We love you. Yeah. Love you too. Bye, Bye, Liam. Bye. Bye. Oh, we. I. I. T- t- see, it so turns close. out time pressure. Yeah. <laughs> we were so close. We were so close. Anyway, right. Yeah. If you can find a journal, find yourself a pet journalist and convert them against Hyperloop. That's my call to. <laughs> yeah. Call put, to put, a, put a collar on a journalist. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like a train a journalist. And I guess another question is. Does this VAC train technology have a future? You and I disagree on this, Ross, because you yeah. kind of think maybe in the distant future it like, does, don't yeah, you? Yeah, distant future, 100 years from now, I think, you know, eventually, okay, you're going to build a 10,000 mile an hour transatlantic tunnel. You, it's just the logical Tr- thing to do. Long the time is we don't now. have enough materials on this planet to do that. That's we have to the do problem. some like asteroid mining or something. Yeah, so we, have to do astro- we have to get asteroid mining down. There's a load of large, of increasingly large dominoes required before we get to this point. Yeah, yeah, but if you do it at some point, I think. But you know, We're doing all is... of that shit, why do we want to get around Earth that fast? And also, why wouldn't we just be doing like suborbital bullshit? You know, I yeah, sounds I think, so miserable. I'm Mm. My, my inclination is that for those longer distances, you're still, from a resource perspective and an energy perspective, gonna just you're gonna end up creating kind of um, uh, artificial fuels for kind of regular ass jet aircraft. Oh yeah, that's, that's the other thing you wind up like that, biofuels that, oh, and stuff yeah, like that's, that. That's that's yeah. another huge like technology like money pit is synthetic fuels. It is, yeah. and it is large amounts of bullshit. But I reckon it's closer as to reality that we do it's that. Much, than, much than like the room this. temperature superconductor, it's one of those things where it's almost all bullshit. But if someone does it, we can just kind of dust our hands and figure out all the things we fucked up. Doesn't matter. Solved them. Bossed it. Easy. Um, <laughs> I, I think, yeah. If you if you figure out like something, if you figure out like fusion power, and then you can, mm. you know, you 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 develop processes that just use a shitload of energy, but can otherwise extract like iron from dirt or whatever. You know, maybe you can make this work. But that's mm. a long time from now. We're we're talking distant future, not immediate future. At, I suppose part of the and this people challenge me on like when I say a very strongly and assertive that driverless cars <laughs> will never exist, mm. <laughs> they they say well the technology is leap, moving on in leaps and bounds and it sure will and I go yeah but have you noticed like there's a bigger world out there My, I, I suppose I, I think the way that our civilization 
exists and functions is going to change so radically by the end of this century that we're just not going to be thinking about this stuff for a couple yeah, of like, centuries afterwards. Not even to be a pessimist about it, but well, if you wanted to be a pessimist about it, you could be like, this is like a Mayan guy uh, in sort of like 1500 being like, listen, our calendar technology is getting better and better and better. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, sure, but like it, that doesn't really make us more resilient against the sort of existential threats that might make it irrelevant. I don't know. The, May- the Mayans are the Mayans are more resilient than the Aztecs and the Incans. Mm. <laughs> yeah. They're still yeah, around. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. The um, like the the, the the so yeah, you get to the point where where like even if you don't go full pessimist, we're gonna have to spend so we're gonna have to pay so much attention to resource management. You know, um, that that this stuff is gonna we're gonna be kicking this novel technology stuff way back into the long grass. Mm. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. It requires a huge amount of investment, which. There's a lot of money flying around, but like it in a very sort of undirected way, yeah, and yes. fundamentally like wasteful way. And what I'm saying at this point is, of course, to bring back an old favorite, climate Stalin. Um, hey, you know, you gotta, you gotta. I mean, if you reorient, if you reorient the economy, so there's not one lever that's instant in uh, interest late rates. <laughs> Mm. You yeah. might uh, you you might have more useful investment of money into infrastructure, climate but we don't Stalin. have that. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, climate Stalin. I don't know why I said it like that. Climate but, uh, yeah. Stalin. Climate Stalin. Climate Stalin. What if it was climate Trotsky? Uh, interesting, but then it gets ice picked in the back of the head by the climate. Yeah, I don't. So. I don't think that would work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I, I, this is not technology that you should be necessarily pursuing now, particularly not in the form of Hyperloop. Build regular high speed rail, and we're gonna have you know airliners for a long time. Um, yeah, they remain. Frankly, they remain for long distance flights. They 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 you know they don't get me wrong. They're carbon horrific, yeah. but they remain the most resource efficient way of moving those long distances because the carbon that you'd need to invest, you know, the carbon emissions from building across the Atlantic Tunnel. If you ignore the fact there's not enough steel. Put me on a so sailing ship. Huge. I don't care if it takes three weeks. Like just <laughs> fucking... nuclear shipping. That's nuclear yeah, nuclear shipping is uh, Put a me big on the nuclear one. Back out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I believe the Chinese are working on a uh, nuclear container ship right now. Mm. Yeah, genuinely based. Yes. Mm. But uh, you know, we'd like to see some more conventional high speed rail. And then you can worry about very very fast trains that go. Arbitrary distances at arbitrary speeds, mm. but for the for the most yes. part, this has just been yeah. a a large amount of kind of like bullshit that has sunk money and time into it. Yes, and I attention. Did. Yes, another yep. crucial resource of which we have Absolutely. stolen almost three hours of yours. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what did Liam late for a, an evening date? You know, mm. just what did we learn? <sighs> Don't, I guess we learn not to do it again. Like, yeah. don't drive to Milton Keynes. Yeah, don't drive to Milton Keynes. Exercise, exercise, exercise some control of your finances, European Union. Uh, <laughs> God damn, yeah. So, so send a guy out there to look at the pipe because, however, much, Imp- even if you like fly him out first class, it's gonna uh, like cost less money for him to go out there <laughs> look at the pipe. Be like, this is bullshit. Pay him a living wage and a, like an executive <laughs> level salary to write a report saying the pipe is bullshit. And then you don't give them the money, then you just gave them without doing any of that. I mean, you are literally right. The the the, the theme there is employ better government advisors. Yeah. You, yeah, universal like... bureaucratic income. Eventually, everyone will work for the EU um, uh, at some level, <laughs> and we will go around inspecting each other, and everything's going to be fine. You know. Yeah, you got to move. We'll do after move, the room temperature superconductor. Move engineering in house. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yes. Be more like Japan, but not in any of the bad ways. Put me out of work. Insource all engineering functions. Seriously. <laughs> um, be like Ch- Japan. Chinatown Build buses. a weird gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> build, build the Port Authority bus terminal and pave the earth. Yes. Uh, be like Dave and move to California yeah. to work on high-speed rail. Yeah. Don't move to Bakersfield. <laughs> um well we have a segment on this podcast called safety third shake hands for danger hello liam Roz, alice and guest Bzzz. no uh, liam, liam yeah, is gone slightly yeah, wrong, lost liam. We're wrong lost in an liam. unexpected way 
Yeah. yeah. This story occurred while I worked for a retail printing company that was shortly thereafter acquired and is today a national retail chain of printing and shipping offices. Image attached. Okay. Nobody has a printer anymore. <laughs> yeah. I used to work in a print shop, and yes, exactly. Mm. <laughs> As it is with many companies, shortly before they are gobbled up, the best days were in the rear view mirror. Staffing was inadequate. Training was haphazard. Safety was truly an afterthought, and equipment was put to the limits of its usefulness rather than being maintained and repaired when damaged. Uh-huh. You know, I used to work for an engineering office that did not have its own plotter. I had to walk down the street to the printing office to get everything printed. It was a fucking hassle, especially since AutoCAD never gets the print right the first time. No, it really never does. Yeah. It always ends up, oh, fucking hell. No, well, my, that's why I use MicroStation. Even MicroStation can't get it right. Well, I got my, annoyed once so that, you, when um, my... My my, so I worked for Atkins, and they had a machine that folded drawings for me. Which which, if you're a track engineer, is very useful because our drawings are fucking way too long. Right. Um, like I moved to another company, and they didn't have it. You had to fold your own drawings like an animal. Shocking. I hated it. <laughs> yeah. The problem the problem when you you work at a a small, tiny little engineering firm that does not have its own plotter is that if you screw up if you screw up the print, um, and you bring it back and you look at it. Then not only not only are you mad at AutoCAD, but then your boss is mad at you for wasting money. It's like, no, it's the software. It's the software that does this. It's yeah. totally unpredictable. <laughs> you have a job code for that, you know. Yeah. Fucked drawings. Fucked yeah. drawings. It's nobody's fault except AutoCADs. They should pay <laughs> us to use that software. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um at our site, we had a large number of 1990s era rolling cabinets between six and ten feet long. Ooh, those are so dangerous. <laughs> and the most notable feature of these, as fit their age, was the doors. They were failing. The cabinet located right next to our drill press had one door fully removed. It was not repaired, replaced, or discarded as those involved doing something. Capital D, capital it's S. Everybody's job and yeah. nobody does it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead, it was simply leaned against the side with jagged, torn metal hinges sticking straight out. Cool. I mentioned the lack of maintenance. This was a common issue under the longtime shop manager, the boss. Fortuitous naming, though. Yeah. To be it's fair to the guy. Determinism. <laughs> yeah. To be fair to the guy, I learned more from the boss about dealing with the public, customer service, and how to work quickly and efficiently under pressure than anyone else in my life. But to paraphrase Walt Whitman, the boss was large and contained multitudes. Mm. Uh oh. First, we don't like multitudes. <laughs> Down with multitudes. <laughs> First, the boss was right about everything and refused to accept he was mistaken about anything. Yeah, you this can was any, a, any kind of like management tyranny position that allows you to do that. Yes. This was a problem given that he was a real weirdo. He once brought oh, up. Well, no, let's not start throwing stones here. <laughs> <laughs> he once brought up in casual conversation that not only was the moon landing fake, it was impossible due to radiation oh. from the Van Allen belt. Oh, dear. What followed was an hour long shouting argument between us, after which we didn't speak for a week. That's really funny. You just go in the print shop with your like AutoCAD drawing to get your AutoCAD uh, thing printed, and it's two guys yelling at each other. But you don't know shit about the fucking Van Allen belt. <laughs> honestly, honestly, from the times I went into that print shop in Media, Pennsylvania, um, they had nothing else to do most of the time. I, 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 I imagine it. It must have happened more often than you would think in Media, Pennsylvania. Uh, Lassen for in the middle of Pennsylvania. Yes, it's not in the middle of Pennsylvania. It's in southeast Pennsylvania. Fuck. <laughs> Bollocks. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe it was in the middle at one point. It's, it's like in media Pennsylvania, but like in the same way as in media race, you know? You're yes. like, you walk in on the Van Allen belt thing. Yeah. <laughs> the boss believed that allergies and asthma were fake and mocked sufferers of both. Okay. It was okay. also and asthma? Like, yeah, asthma, asthma is fake. Uh -huh. He was also certain right. that the cigarettes he smoked openly on the production floor were good for him. They finally invented it. They invented yeah. it, yeah. yeah. The boss was also ex-army and fond of things like bypassing yeah, okay, safety all of features. This, all of this tracks now, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
bypassing safety features on equipment like laminators or printers, and working through being tired, sick, or injured. Which brings us to the incident. Uh, we gotta get out of this culturally, you know? Don't fucking karoshi yourself. You, it is, it's better for everyone, including like you and the productivity of the organization, for you to take the time off when you're sick. Yes. Yes, it is. Absolutely. I mentioned the drill press. For those not in printing, a print shop uses a drill press to drill holes in documents. Most commonly, this is three holes for inserting into a binder but there are less common but still used other arrangements. I was changing out the bits for the drill press when I fumbled one and it fell into the dark space between the press, the nearby cabinet, and a broken door which jutted out a sharp bent metal hinge oh. on which, while reaching for the drill bit, I proceeded to tear a sharp six-inch oh, no. plus long gash into my forearm. Oh, yeah. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. I yelped, and I said, I gotta go. I immediately ran to our first aid kit, and realized quickly a couple gauze pads were not going to cut it, and I needed medical attention. Yeah, that's going to be a, like a, yeah. a suturing situation. Yeah. The boss had other ideas and proceeded to explain loudly on the production floor, in earshot of customers and coworkers, that, one, I was being a pussy, I guess, <laughs> by bleeding so much. Uh-huh. I mean, I suppose that might be accurate well, in a certain yeah, way. Well, but, uh... well, were he being a pussy? Like, yeah. uh, we, we, we can't know. Yeah. Two, I would be fine if I went outside and, quote, rub some dirt on it. Motri no, don't do that. That's Motri not how that works. Probably, probably, do yeah, not give yourself tetanus. To say, you know? Probably, probably yeah. avoid, avoid tetanus. Three, those prints I were working on were not going to drill themselves. I let him say his piece and <laughs> told him asshole. I was going... <laughs> I let him say his piece, and I told him I was going to a clinic, drove 20 minutes to the company-approved medical office, and several dozen or so stitches later, I was good as new. Youch. I wish I could... That's a bad cut if you needed that many stitches. That's a lot of stitches, yeah. Crikey. I wish I could say the store had a renewed focus on safety, but later that year, another co-worker almost strangled himself by getting his tie caught in the roll laminator, which had its safety guard bypassed with a ballpoint pen. Oh, God. Jesus. Jeez, don't laminate your co-worker. Because it was easier to change the role that way. Mm. The boss left a year or two later due to differences in management philosophy with our new owners. The boss did whatever the fuck he wanted when he wanted to. Uh, he opened I mean, sort of look well on my stripes, though we know more after me sort of moment here. We, yeah, <laughs> a bygone age um, <laughs> of, of American management tyranny. Yes. Yeah, he's uh, sort of a uh, uh, management ronin. Yeah, uh, basically, yeah. yeah. Like we've we've done the sword hunt, and now the management samurai are bureaucrats. Yeah, he opened an independent copy shop six months later, stole half the major customers, and then went out of business after a year. I am saluting right now. <laughs> he really did yes. become a Ronin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And he did a murder suicide pact. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to you guys for the great content, and oh. to all listeners, printing is still good, trees will be here forever, trash isn't real. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. That was Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Our next episode will be on Chernobyl. Does anyone have commercials before we go? It's called Rail Natter, and you can find yes. it on YouTube. It's really good. Yeah. I've been on I mean, it. We, we, we have. I've been on it, too. And we you, you, we presented half of an episode of it today. Yeah. But the other yeah. half is Garrett's. <laughs> yeah. So you if you go, enjoyed go. this episode, you've already half enjoyed Rail Natter. So go yeah. and exactly. finish the other round up. Yeah, exactly. You, know? you gotta go to you gotta go to yeah. Rail Natter on YouTube and only half the episodes are easy to find because some of them are live streams. Then you gotta go on the channel and look. Oh, it's very irritating. Yeah, I yeah, know. I'm so sorry, everyone. And most of them are live streams, so it's actually really hard. It's very difficult to find the podcast. Um uh, it's, it's uh, not your I fault. I wouldn't it's recommend YouTube's it. I'd avoid fault. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, no, Alice was on and made me buy this watch that I'm wearing right now. Oh, the Monday. Which is a nice Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I think I've told you that before. It was a fun episode. We talked about watches and time. It was fab. That was ages ago now. Yeah, I've, actually, done, I've done bloody 202 of those as of tonight. Amazing. 202 episodes. Every single week I've done an episode since I started it. Insane. Mm. What an idiot. Actually, <laughs> um, I finally got my Mondane back. 
Um, oh, this uh, is the thing. It's the one train yeah. watch, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I, we all have mundane watches now because <laughs> they're <laughs> very nice watches. You can't yeah, they're nice. like ball engineer or train master. Yeah. Yet, um, yeah. Subscribe to <laughs> subscribe the Patreon. To, uh, the Patreon. Subscribe to <laughs> Gareth's Patreon. Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Um, uh, no, uh, yeah. Railroad Enough Railroad. people I, I, subscribe to the Patreon. We can all buy nicer watches and then build HS two. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Everyone. Yeah. If we could, we we do need to. I mean, we said this last time, didn't we? We do need to. Um, we do need to get the Patreon on. Just buy. Just like Gorilla buy. Uh, Gorilla build HS two. No, I, I I have I have plugs which are um. Uh, listen to uh, Kill James Bond oh, uh, and Trash Future, but Kill James Bond in particular because oh my god, I'm I know. So you got I have a thing I told myself when I was shopping in Sainsbury's that if I was going to appear on an episode, I would tell you, which is um uh, that I'm loving your Euro Spy uh, stuff. Even though you guys are getting sick of doing them, mm. they are so fun to listen to. They are honestly such good. It's so much fun. Well, thank you so um, much. So uh, everyone should listen to Kill James Bond. It's brilliant. Um, it's getting me through as I as I I, I have it as my like uh, weekly shop listening. So oh, I go around so Sainsbury's sweet. with my nice earphones and I listen to that. It's lovely. Oh. I had a, I had a I had a funny from the Zardoz episode. I thought of, and mm. I forgotten what it was. Oh, that episode yeah. is so. I mean, also <laughs> that film. I just did not expect what ended up. I didn't expect it to become good. Yeah, I was like, no, this is going to be funny crap, and it was ended up being like a seriously profoundly interesting sounding film. Yeah, that um, was a good really episode. Was. Yeah, thank you, thank uh, yeah. you. I'm I'm liking this sort of uh, new ending of the show. Where we just praise me for ten minutes. This is this, this is the, the mutual admiration <laughs> hey, society. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah. thank you. So, um, so, do, so do both of you. You know. So, and also, Liam's not here. Liam, uh, you're not here, and you probably won't listen to this because we're three hours in. But um, I, I love you so much. Oh, you look so beautiful at your wedding. It was lovely, uh, Liam. Uh, it was. It was. Uh, so there we go. So there's some Liam love that Liam won't listen to, um, uh, because he's. Uh, it's not going to listen to three hours of episode. Uh, who, 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 who listens to the podcasts that they record themselves? Oh, oh. not me. I, I oh, start listen, like I start are. listening back, and I start realizing when I've the glossal stops have slipped back into my accent. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the, we did the KJB episode on the spy in the green hat, and I developed a new complex about the way in which I say hat when I'm uh, not thinking about it, which is just hat, hat, the hat, hat. the hat, the spy in the green hat. hat yeah. I, I, the glow stops quite. Uh, yeah, it's it's a bit South London. Yeah, here's the thing. South London. Here's, yeah, here's yeah. the thing to think about this episode, though. Although it took three hours, we got through slides at twice the rate we usually do. Incredible, Gareth. Yeah. You're some kind of catalyst <laughs> for this. It's the, the rail nat away is 400 slides <laughs> in 40 minutes. Flank speed, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Anyway, we sh- I, I, I'll stop saying things. Um, I love you all. I love coming yeah. on. Uh, oh. Listeners, I love you all too. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm in a happy mood. I'm also very sleep deprived because of baby reasons. Oh, yeah. I have a child. <laughs> all right. Well, in that case, what we should say is, well, that was a podcast. It was. Thanks for coming. Yes. Uh, bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye.